The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this big unit Thursday, April 18th, 2024. This sports program starts now! Sports are wonderful, and there's a lot of sports going on as we count down today's to the NFL Draft, which is just one week away, where we will be live on YouTube, what? ESPN Plus, what? ESPN.com, what? Uh, the TikTok, what? and I think uh, anywhere else you could potentially be live on social media, alongside a man who will be co-hosting with us, the greatest coach in the history of the NFL, and the greatest general manager in the history of the NFL. Bill Belichick will be joining us. Mad Mel Kuyper will be in attendance. There will be some surprises. We'll have a draft board, and we'll have a hell of a Thursday evening with all of you starting at 7.30 with our countdown to the draft spectacular, where that man, who's right over my right shoulder. I look super professional. Yeah, you do. Great wow. photo. Arms all across. Yeah, shout out Derek for making the, the <laughs> graphic here. And 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 Kuiper obviously looks great. Con man, wow, living your best life back that. here. But Belichick posing as if he's looking to the heavens to say, football gods, thank you for choosing me to be a man who has committed my entire being to the greatest sport on earth. He'll be going through some draft myths and projecting what he thinks is about to take place from 7.30 to 8. And then when the draft kicks off, Buckle up because we're there for the next nine hours Ooh. as 32 teams will attempt to change their fortunes of next year. Will, t- will somebody draft a player that will be there for the next 20 years? Mm. Possibly. Maybe. Will all 32 teams or all 32 picks be complete busts? Maybe. Hope not. Uh, yeah. Could be. Maybe. Will all 32 of them be Hall of Famers? Maybe. Yes. We have no idea what we're in for, but we know we'll be live in Detroit. We cannot wait for that. We're very, very thankful. And also, a little breaking news uh, here on this wonderful Big Unit Thursday. Yesterday, we announced the whale had landed in the draft spectacular. That was Bill Belichick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was excited to kind of tease that one because it did take a little bit to make it happen. A lot of meetings, a lot of conversations. I think Bill wanted to make sure he got a full grasp of what he was signing up for. Always going to be prepared and everything. He did that. He studied our show. He's excited. I think that's what we saw yesterday. We are honored and grateful. Yeah. So we're pumped to make that announcement. Thank you to the internet and to the world for reacting how they are. Now, I have heard from some people uh, that are a little bit older. Mm-hmm. They're saying like, hey, how, how do I... Uh, how do I watch Bill Belichick on this thing? Sure. I'm like, well, just like, you know, Amazon stream. I didn't do the streaming. I'm not Amazon's puppet. Oh. Okay? Is it on TV? Is it not on TV? I'm going to say, well, funny, is it smart TV? I don't need the funny business. Where the hell am I watching this? Well, you have to go to ESPN.com. I think it would be the easiest way. Mm-hmm. On your phone, do you have a smartphone that has the internet? Yeah, I got Go to ESPN.com. It should be right at the top. You go to YouTube.com, there's a good chance it's probably going to be mm-hmm. right yep. at the top. And I know you love TikTok, you olds. Love it. So just go mm-hmm. on TikTok. It'll probably be mm-hmm. on there as well. So that is obviously huge news. We can't thank everybody enough for being as receptive as they are. And we can't thank Bill enough for allowing yeah. us to... Yeah. To have him be a part of our program. That's Thursday night for the Draft Spectacular. Correct. Friday, our show will be live from Detroit as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Noon to three-ish. Okay. Day of round two of the draft. Oh, yeah. yeah. Roger Goodell will be joining our program. What? The commissioner? The commissioner of the NFL. 12.30 Eastern time. Roger Goodell will be joining us live from Detroit (laughs) on Friday after round one, before round two kicks off. And we will finally have an opportunity to chit-chat with a man that has taken the NFL from ha all the way to ha and has signed an extension to take it to ha. 
We have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to chit chat with him. I have been on the record of stating that what Roger Goodell is able to do speaking is something that not a lot of humans in the history of our existence mm -hmm. can do. One of the greatest talkers I've ever witnessed and seen. We see it on display at his press conference during the Super Bowl anytime he chit chats. We saw him whenever he got summoned to. Um, House Oversight Committee, yes. yes, and I was excited to watch him dance with the politicians because he is a better speaker than politicians are, and he's also a better businessman than they are. So we were pumped to see how he would handle it. I saw him in a team meeting before the lockout happened, answering questions from all different players and ideas, and boom, he was able to give an answer without saying anything, and then he just moved on to the next one. We walked out of there going, "Oh, okay, well, it makes sense." That's pretty good. And then about a week goes by, and we're like, "Wait a minute, he didn't really." What did he say again? <laughs> and that's why mm -hmm. Roger Goodell was paid the big bucks because he is. You know, the man who's in charge of yeah. corralling 31 billionaires mm -hmm. and keeping a league in a trajectory that's up and to the right. We have nothing but respect for him, and we'll get a chance to chat with him next Friday. So Bill Belichick drafts spectacular Thursday night, mm -hmm. then Roger Goodell on Friday, mm -hmm. and then we head into the weekend watching the rest of the draft having the time of our life. Bingo. Pumped. I am so excited and grateful that we get to do this for a living. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt. Got a chance to show your uh, saggy tricep to Bill Belichick yesterday. Yeah, it was crazy. I still kind of not really fully process it. Don't think I will process it for the rest of my life. I mean, the thoughts you texted me last night, the thought of being on a set with Bill Belichick for five hours in an evening will be incredible. The amount of times I'm just going to say, Oh, Coach, that's exactly what I was going to say, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for laying it out much better. I, I mean, it's going to be incredible. And, you know, Mr. Goodell joining on Friday as well. That'll be incredible. Pumped for that. And, you know, not to mention playoffs starting all over the place. Yeah, NHL, NBA. Right. We got obviously play-in games took place last night. A lot of updates on that. And also, uh, NBA player has been banned for the rest of his life. Yikes. Right. See ya. Yep. Can't do it. Good yeah. reasons. You're going to ruin the integrity of the game. Can't do it. You remember what Tim Donahue did? Yeah, mm -hmm. we banned him forever. You too, pal. One-way trip the hell out of here mm -hmm. forever. Now, what's happening with John Terry Porter? Yep. yep. Interesting name. Never seen that name before, before this entire investigation. Mm -hmm. Never. Obviously, you've seen Porter before, which yeah. I believe... Yeah, brother. Yeah. 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 That's how mm -hmm. the first name, though, never seen it before. Pretty proud of it, pumped of it. As I learned of him, though, I realized, oh, yeah, I'm never going to hear from this guy again because what he did was allegedly give some information about his health and other stuff to a known NBA gambler that turned a $80,000 parlay into a million dollars. <laughs> okay. That's not great. You know, the books, once they see them get, huh. the books get hit for a million bucks on something, they're like, okay. We need to investigate this because that's not normal. They start looking into it. Then they start finding some irregularities in, uh, you know, John Tay's uh, betting uh, sprees, yep. including betting against the team that he was on, even though he was not playing, betting yep. against them in numerous bets, to the total of a $21,000 net profit. Yeah. This dude right. won twenty one grand, <laughs> and in doing so, basically ruined his entire legacy, his name, and his career. Now, giving the information to an NBA gambler, turning 80000 into a million bucks, I think he probably could have pleaded ignorance. I was just having a conversation with somebody. It's my health. I didn't mean to give it away for them to do that. But whenever they track you and they find out that you yeah. were making bets, yep. not only on the NBA but on your own team to lose, mm -hmm. it's like that's an immediate... Yep. Get them the hell out of here. I'd assume the Raptors fans feel the same way. The Raptors team probably feels the same way. I see a lot of people, you know, comparing the punishment for him versus other things that have happened in the NBA. And we would like to once again go on the record as stating that we understand that terrible things happen in a lot of different professions, but in professional sports as well. Whenever you're talking about thousands, thousands of people, a lot of money, potential you know, lack of uh, good conscience in some things and bad decisions are made. Bad people do bad things. Not everybody in every league is bad. We're not saying that. But comparing that type of incident in terrible thing versus gambling on a sport in which you can control the outcome, it's just two different combos. It's just a, it, this one is integrity of sport. Integrity of sport potentially jeopardizes entire league, yep. game, mm -hmm. everything going forward, marketing, Everything. Once people start realizing, oh, wait, the players aren't even trying to, well, then why am I watching? Why am I betting? That can ruin an entire league. Now, terrible people can also ruin a league, but you can eliminate that. Betting on games has to have a severe penalty. We saw it in the NFL a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing it in the NBA. And as the sports gambling is growing, we want everybody to do it responsibly, obviously, but also players cannot do it. We cannot have sports becoming something that the script people can actually point to and say, just like we said it was, it is scripted. Because once people start losing their own money, 
on stuff. They start getting a bit more emotional. That's why you can't have any questions around it. I understand why they banned him forever. I bet you a lot of NBA players understand why they banned him forever. But people on the internet are always going to point out like, wait, wait, this is 20 games. Okay. And it's banned for life. Well, You're going to say well. that this is worse. Well, it's like gambling isn't necessarily worse than that. Uh, but jeopardizing everybody in the league's career and future is certainly not worth it. And that's what happens whenever players gamble on sports in which they're at. And we'd like to remind other NBA players, NFL players, MLB guys, what? WNBA players, uh, NHL guys, what? all of Gambling is going to be around. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when you retire, you're going to be such a better gambler. It's going to be awesome. Oh, my God. When you're done, it's ripe for the picking. Sure. You just can't do it while you're playing. It's all kind of understood by everybody that's ever played an actual sport. One half of the hammer. Done. Cowboys, Tevin Diggs is here. This is a massive story in the sports gambling world, especially with where the world's headed to. Huge. And, and, and to your point, is killing someone worse than, than gambling on uh, sports? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Agreed. Okay. Here, here. But, but I don't think anybody's getting a twenty game suspension for killing somebody. No, well, no, no. that is this is hypothetical, okay? Uh, hypothetical. Interesting hypothetical to go with. There's I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay. But I don't actually, but I do is yeah. killing someone gonna end the NBA? No. Is players gambling on the NBA that are in the NBA gonna end the NBA? It could potentially. So that's why he got the the lifetime ban on this. And sports gambling is awesome and sports is awesome and but you can't do this. Like especially like Twenty thousand dollars is what he made. Now, now did he get a did he get a piece of the one point one million that he gave the information to the the guy that thought he was going to be able to bet eighty thousand dollars on a player that no one's ever heard. With all due respect, no one's ever heard of this guy. Okay, you you don't you'll think a sports book's going to be like eighty thousand dollars to win a million on a guy that nobody's ever heard of. Okay, yeah, that's going to get flagged immediately. That's going to go through the systems. They're going to check everything and they check everyone's account and it's all going to it's all going to like. The sport, that's what's great about legal, legal sports betting now. It's mm -hmm. like you, this stuff, it actually, it act, like this would have been, if this would have happened in the past before legal sports books, like it, first off, yes. Dead. The, yes. the guy that did the, the $80,000 bet, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. dead. Yeah, probably. Yeah. If, For a million bucks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're sorry. dealing with the Italians or the Greeks, yeah, most likely dead, okay, in that situation. But you can't, like, you cannot, especially on your own team to lose. Like, we've, we've talked about players who bet on their overs, okay, and their team to win. Boxers I, have bet on themselves to win fights. Yeah. Like we've heard about that. Okay, all right, going through another. Let's up the purse a little bit. But anytime you're betting on your own team it. to lose, mm -hmm. like that is not. Nobody wants that person around. See, banned for life. Okay, the NBA said it. I don't think you're going to find a team that's going to be like, give us the guy that was betting against his own team. To <laughs> like, I, I don't. I don't think that is necessarily something that every team would be desiring around free agency, especially a guy that his over-under was like one and a half yeah. Yeah. Bingo. boards or something. Yeah. yeah, Six points. Yeah, like they weren't high odds, but this is what happened when it, it kind of occurred with the Colts. Like, you had to know, okay, is Isaiah Rogers making bets against the Colts to lose? Like, is he is he actively trying to sabotage the team? And no, obviously it was a different thing, and he got suspended for a year, and, you know, losing a year of your NFL career, obviously huge wow. deal, but he didn't get banned for life because of the fact of like the nature of the bets and like he can at least explain hey i was making these bets trying to make a couple extra dollars for family whether that's true or not whatever that's what he said like this is clearly hey i'm trying to i'm trying to beat the system i'm trying to beat the league i, I think i am smarter than Absolutely. adam silver who sat in that chair who was mm -hmm. a and super was it draft kings? was it DraftKings? was it yeah i wasn't sure I think what they were the ones was. that came out and said it was the biggest win of the night oh, last yeah. night mm -hmm. was a Jonte Porter bet. Yeah, a prop. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, it makes have you sense. ever heard of this? We haven't until we just gave a million dollars to somebody overnight. And then it happened again, too. I mm -hmm. think there was another time mm -hmm. where it was the biggest, and they were like, yeah, this ain't. Well, we need to talk about this. And then the clips of him like hitting a three in a game and being like, "Shit!" Like, damn it! Like he didn't mean to do it. It's like those are so damning. I haven't seen that. Oh yeah, there's one where he he hits a three from the wing, and then as soon as it goes in, he's like, "Ah, son of a bitch." Let's stay. <laughs> let's stay in the basketball world uh, away from that one because just as former player and as people that deal with gambling, I mean that's. Tone Diggs is a host of a gambling show literally every day out of this office called Hammer Don. It's a phenomenal show. They've been on a win streak for like two years somehow. Not guaranteed. No. no, no, no. But they have been swinging a hot bat for a long time. He, Gumpy, Bruce, and Mitt, obviously. Yeah, Mitt. Yeah. Yeah. It is so damn good. We have profited from sports gambling being legalized. I, I understand that you could kind of say I'm a hypocrite, but like all of this works. We Everything works yes. in the sports world because we don't have it being 
actually manipulated yes. from within. Integrity. Coaches, players, mm -hmm. things like that just can't happen. It just can't happen. And anytime, and this is back in the day, I'm an old man, you know, you walk into any locker room, college, NFL, basically got a picture of Pete Rose doing that dive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the, the, oh, yeah. the slide yep. head first or whatever. Yep. And it's like, don't be this guy. And that's literally how it goes. That's why the Shohei Otani thing yeah. mm -hmm. was so big and so loud because it's like, would Shohei Otani, everything we know about <laughs> Shohei Otani, and we've heard about Shohei Otani, would Shohei be a guy that would jeopardize all of his baseball thing Billion. to gamble on soccer games around the globe. Like, I don't know. I don't think so. No. And what the feds are saying is no, because if you're an athlete, it is literally pounded into your head, literally since you start this entire thing, not to do it. So John Tay Porter at some point just had to say, to hell with it. I'm going to try to get away with it. It didn't work. Let's stay in the NBA and, you know, cooking books a little bit. Whoa. Bobon. <laughs> mm -hmm. missing those free throws yeah. Oh, yeah. for those people to yeah. get free chicken. And then it happened again yep. last night uh -huh. as the uh, Sixers were losing a game. If it's if the opposing team misses two free throws in a row, I think everybody in the arena gets free chicken or yep. something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, Chick-fil-A so. in the entire arena. Mm -hmm. And it first introduced to this by Bo Bond, yep. who they were up like 30 or something in the fourth quarter late. He's on a foul line, misses the first one, and somebody in the crowd is like, hey, need ya, need ya, mm -hmm. need ya. You miss another one right now. Yeah. We all get free chicken. What's that? He's, he doesn't know the – he doesn't – here it is right here. Here's Bo Bond becoming a hero in another team's arena. Fans are getting excited here. There might potentially be some free chicken. I got you. I got if he misses the second free throw. Close game. Eight points. A lot different than what I thought it was. <laughs> a little, a little tight. Oh, uh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Could All have been 106-97 there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, still a close game. Four minutes left. Instead, Bo Bon says, you know what? Yeah, you guys earned it. All time. You absolutely deserve it. Happened again last night in the play-in game. I love it. This is brilliant marketing. See, this is smart here. Yes. They'll have, you know, for football, the in-game advertising is the dumb. I've never. Yeah, not great. None of it has ever worked. No. You know, I appreciate you know, like uh, Stanley Security mm -hmm. sponsoring, like, the challenge. Right. But is anybody watching that going, you know, I want I the do. Stanley Security. I do need to, Sweet. you know, uh, kind of bone uh, up my security. I don't think anybody, you know, is doing it. Most of the advertisers are just there so they can say they're a part of it and do the whole song and dance. I get it. This one, brilliant. Actually, the entire arena buying in, the players on the floor buying in and causing these viral situations. Congrats to Chick. Is it Chick Fil A? I, th I believe it is Chick Fil A. Congrats, yeah. Chick Fil A, creating one of the best in-game advertisements that I've ever seen in my life. I'm watching that game last night, and I hear the crowd, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, start cooking. And I'm like, I don't know if it was in Philly. Here it is. Yeah. Builds when you're not scoring. The frustration builds. Fifty-nine forty-eight. And you're not getting called. MC. And if he misses this, it. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Height. Look at Chick Fil A oh, go nuts. For chicken, free chicken. I love chicken. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that's a that's a play-in tournament game. You got the commentator buying into it. Yeah. This spurred their run. They were down 11. They went on a huge run after this. The Sixers did. How? Uh, I heard a lot of booing from the Sixers fans last night while I was watching wow. because uh -huh. they were up early, then the heat come all the way back, mm -hmm. and now Jimmy Butler is hurt, uh, I guess, going yep. forward and everything. But that is the most brilliant advertising yep. in-game that I've ever seen, and I think it should be deserved uh, a nice applause every single time it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Boban also used to play for the Clippers. Kind of like became who Boban is with the Clippers, you know, the John Wick stuff and all that, and then he went to Dallas with Luka. But uh, there is a very easy way to work this into the NFL. Like, could you imagine? Miss field goal. Yeah. I almost didn't want to say that because you should just – the Lighthouse House should probably adopt that immediately because <laughs> that environment would be so sweet. Missed extra points. Yeah, exactly. Like any sort of oh, kick. Oh, yeah. Or false starts. False yeah, starts false it could starts. work as well. Get real loud. If you get three – if you get two false starts or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Same drive or something like that. So then it is encouraging – Hey, we, you guys want chicken or not? Now, much different arena than stadium. <laughs> True. Yeah. Like uh, arena 15, 16,000. 
stadium, 70,000. Uh, yeah. That's a little different, you know, budget for how much the advertising is. But anytime a company can buy in and make something better, I am a big fan of it. Speaking of a company buying in and, you know, maybe making something better, what's going on with the Seahawks? Mm. Good question. Yikes. Interesting. Okay. This hit my, uh, you know, my news feed yesterday. Okay. It, it reminded me of what happened with the Indianapolis Colts after all my friends got cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky to be at the tail end of the Bill Polian, Peyton Manning era. Okay, winning a decade in NFL history. Obviously, you've seen the highlights. Now, you never see Peyton Manning in a Colts uniform anymore. Sure. You only see him in a Broncos uniform. And that's because Jim Irsay. Sudo had to cut Peyton Manning because mm -hmm. at the point, there was a lockout happening. He didn't know if his nerves and his or Jim, I guess, didn't know if the nerves from his neck were going to be able to make him feel his fingers ever again. Andrew Luck, the greatest prospect on earth, is sitting there. Weird situation. Now Peyton has a statue here. I think Jim will try forever to be a guy, to make it right with Peyton. I think Peyton obviously understands it all. But you only see photos of Peyton in Denver Broncos uniforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not fun. Not cool. Not great, especially for Colts fans who became football fans because of what Peyton Manning was able to do. But it wasn't just Peyton Manning. It was that entire era. You talk about dudes that have just sacrificed for this city of Indianapolis to make Indianapolis a football town. There was a nice mural on the wall. All my friends, literally with the Super Bowl and everything that this city is, from the RCA Dome to Lucas Oil, it was like a story of the Indianapolis Colts. Sweet. With like Freeney on there, Mathis is on there, Gary Brackett, Jeff Saturday's on there, Ryan Dean was on there, Peyton Manning obviously on there, Edron James, Joseph Adai's on there. Basically any, Bob Sanders I think was mm -hmm. up in the top. With like Vinatieri's holding a, a fist pose. Yep. Like this massive mural was on the wall and it was, it was awesome. It was like, okay, this is kind of the story of the Indianapolis Colts and what it has been. So then whenever, you know, they move on from Peyton and then they move into the next era with Grigson, who I've made good with. That's right. Yep. Nice to chat with you, Ryan. I do think this was still a horrendous decision. <laughs> and Chuck Pagano, literally day one, painted it, like saw them painting over the wall. The guy that had worked for the Colts, Angel, I believe his name was, who was friends with, like he'd been a part of the Colts building and facility operator for a long time. He's the one that had oh, to paint over. Geez. Tough day. Crying. Paint over this mural. And I'm just watching as like, oh, Dallas Clark's on there, watching Dallas's face just get covered up and the trophies and everything like that. And it's like, okay, so so we're not the Colts anymore? Don't exist. Yeah, like, what? So this wasn't, that wasn't good, what just happened in the last? Then all the photos of uh, all the greats, all of them, go back to Unitas. All of them taken out of the part where the players are. Take those photos down. We're putting new players up there that we drafted. This is a whole new era, a whole new team. I personally hated it. Every it was only I was the youngest guy that was still on the team that didn't get cut, you know, from the previous regime. Reggie Wayne was obviously still there. Robert Mathis was there. Adam Vinatieri was there. A uh, couple other, but it was basically a clean sweep, whole new team. And I was way too young to say anything, but then I get a chance to fly to Tokyo, Japan for a USO tour with Chuck Pagano sitting right next to him, and I was going to retire. So this was uh, probably a year or two before I actually retired. I was going to retire because I hated just working for these people. Mm -hmm. Like, I did not like it. I did not enjoy it. I hated the way they operated. Like, I just did not like what uh, was happening. So me and Chuck next to each other, 17 hours. And I just basically... <laughs> Gave it to him. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how about day one when you just painted over the entire history of the Colts, took all the photos down? We get it. Is the Indianapolis Chuck and Grigson's? Okay, <laughs> not the Colts. We understand. Now the Seattle Seahawks are doing the same thing. Yikes. Thing. Seattle Seahawks did the same exact thing. Painted over the walls. Here's Leonard Williams, formerly, yes, of the Giants. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, got traded to the Seattle Seahawks last year on October 30th, I believe. Here's his take on the entire thing. My impressions with the team and with the coaches and with Mike um, as an overall feeling, it, it just you can just tell there's a sense of urgency right now. Um, and in, in a way, that's kind of bringing everyone closer together. That's making everyone... You know, be so locked in and like in meetings and in the in the weight room on the field. It's like you could just tell there's a different sense of like everyone's like locked in on a different level. And I remember the first day we came into the team meeting, uh, Mike pointed out that you know there's empty walls in the in the hallways and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, you know, for a person like me, I think that re made me really excited, and I hope it made the rest of the guys excited because. 
you know, we're obviously going to respect tradition and the history of, of the Seahawks, but, but. Wow. Um, I think it's given us like a clean foundation to like create whatever we want to be. Uh, we're not chasing to like be like any other team that's been here before. We want to create our own identity. I understand. I appreciate. I respect it. But also what the Legion of Boom and that Seattle Seahawks team did was wonderful. It yeah. was a massive piece of NFL history. It's like, let's not just try to bury what makes the team the team. McDonald doesn't probably want the gig in Seattle as bad if it wasn't for what Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks had done over the last decade and a half, two decades. So there's a lot that goes into it. That's a decision that gets made. I guess the good way to view it is like, yeah, we got a brand new start, fresh canvas and everything like that. And I understand and I appreciate that. But for me, when it happened at the Colts, my immediate thought was, what are we doing? What are we doing? Then we get Andrew Luck. We go to the AFC Championship game. It's like, all right, I guess we got brand new walls. Coming. Fair enough. And then it didn't happen again. So, I mean, and they haven't won the – Yeah. A, but Ballard comes in. Tossed it back up. There. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in every room. Dwight Freeney's in every room. Yeah. Robert Mathis in every room. Good. Peyton Manning's in every room. It's like, uh, I don't think you should try to bury history to create your own. You can embrace it while also mm -hmm. creating a new era. Hopefully, we have nothing but faith in McDonald. We think he's a fantastic coach out of Baltimore. Same with Schneider, but I don't like the move personally as a player, but Leonard Williams does. He's in the locker room. Who cares? Moving away from football into baseball. There's a man joining us right now, okay? 22 years. <laughs> Damn. This guy threw baseballs with his left hand. Long time. Threw baseballs with his left hand. Hall of Famer, obviously. 303 wins, 166 losses. Damn. 4,875 strikeouts. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> 4,875 dudes stepped into a batter's box with this big son of a bitch on the mound and couldn't get a hit. You know why? What was that? He threw hard. No. He was like the intimidator up there. He right. was. He'll buzz one by your face. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it because he'll beat your ass too. Ladies and gentlemen, here for Direct TV, legend Randy Johnson. Yeah. How are you, man? Hey, glad you could join us, Pat. Hey, Randy, listen, here's the deal. I cannot stress enough that when we heard there was an opportunity to have you on the show, how excited all of us were. I'm not a big baseball. Really good. I didn't grow up in the baseball world, but I knew who the big unit was. Yeah. You know, like there is, you're a guy that crossed all sports, all genres because of how great you were. And as we talk about the DirecTV connection, thank you DirecTV for making this happen. <laughs> they're giving away millet mullets. Millet is bird feed. Okay. Okay, so you can get a mullet-shaped millet to feed the birds. There's little bird ballparks that they're, you could win at DirecTV forward slash... Bird ballparks. DirecTV.com forward slash bird ballparks right now, and it's... It's hilarious, yeah. yeah. first of all. So I appreciate that DirecTV is doing it. I appreciate you signing up to do it. Let's talk about the bird. Uh, Let's talk about it. You blew that thing up, dude. I mean, just absolutely. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay. That bird is uh, obviously no longer with us. But that man who threw that ball is joining us with DirecTV about bird ballparks around the place so that birds can safely watch a baseball game. At what moment did you realize that this was going to be talked about forever? And what is the first thing that goes through your mind as that bird kind of gets destroyed with a 100 miles an hour fastball? I think I think that was a spring training game down in Tucson in 2001, throwing the pitch in a spring training game against the San Francisco Giants. I think it just kind of caught everybody um, – it kind of caught everybody off guard. I'm like, what was that that, that just happened? I thought initially that maybe someone had thrown something uh, and then the impact of the pitch uh, pushed, the, pushed the bird over to the on-deck circle and Jeff Kent, who was uh, on deck, picked it up. And I think at that time, everybody, uh, myself, all the players, uh, everybody in the stands, if you didn't realize what happened then – uh, you did when he was holding up what was left of the bird. So uh, 23 years later, they're still talking about this. Like you said at the intro, 10 All-Star games, won 300 games, close to 5,000 strikeouts, MVP of a World Series. And? You know, and I'm 
recognized and remembered for killing a bird. <laughs> <laughs> with your bare hands. Yeah. With your bare Could you imagine if another yeah. bird was right behind it? We had two birds, one ball. Oh, oh man. my, it would be the ultimate, ultimate metaphor. Uh, about and, hate. and the bird that got away would go home and say, sorry, uh, <laughs> Joe's not coming home tonight. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, the bird brains are something that... Uh, Certainly recognize what was happening in this situation there. Randy, let's talk about how you played baseball and how you threw baseballs. Because we went through a little, once we learned you could come on the show, we're like, oh, we got to go through some big unit highlights. Mm -hmm. We go back. Do you, Obviously, you will remember this, but we did not. All-star game, you you sail one over Crux's head, okay? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the commentator said, obviously this one got away from Randy a little bit, but if we watch you pitch any other time, you weren't scared on that first pitch to let her batter know, like, hey, I can hum this thing right at your face if I wanted to. This on purpose, this first one here? That, 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 that's an all-star game in, in 1993, and uh, I think the ball just kind of slipped out of my hand. <laughs> it was a little, hum a little humid there. And then, luckily, I was able to follow up uh, the next three pitches and uh, and John Crutt kind of swinging at it. Uh, and uh, he was a good sport. It, it, it uh, was a showcase of the game, and I think that was a highlight that everybody remembers as well. Uh, maybe not as much as the bird, but it was a pretty <laughs> funny highlight of my career and, uh, and of his as well. Okay, so let's talk about that, because that's in the All-Star game, and I didn't follow baseball nearly enough. But everybody that does the baseball talks about, you weren't scared, right, to let a hitter know what's coming at him? You weren't scared to give up a ball early to intimidate? Is that an accurate depiction of how you pitched? And do you think there's anybody now that pitches how you pitched? No, because uh, the game has changed uh, in a lot of different uh, ways. Um, but back when I pitched, I not – I not necessarily was throwing a pitch like that on purpose. Sometimes it just happened, you know, uh, especially early in my career before I got, uh, you know, my mechanics down on a consistent basis. But it wasn't unheard of, you know, to be throwing a pitch to the backstop or throw a couple pitches up and in. And I think, you know, pitch, uh, hitters were, you know, hey, is this guy going to hit me? And, you know, I was just a, a bit wild, and at six foot ten, throwing ninety eight, you know, hundred miles an hour, um, that that kind of stuck with me. And so, after a while, I kind of polished my mechanics, just like a football player would. You polish your ability, and uh, and you harness it. And then I go back to the back to the early times and still throw a ball up and in, but now I'm doing it on purpose because I'm letting them know, hey, you're, you're up to the plate. I'm going to make your job a little bit more difficult, and that's what my job is. You know, make your job more difficult uh, and, and doing it without hurting somebody, of course. Could you sense when somebody was scared to death in there? You had to have, I would assume, that you knew when somebody was scared. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, they're, hey, you know, you, in your induction, you know, your, uh, your your intro to me, you know, I struck out close to five, but there, I gave up a lot of home runs. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. Of, yeah. You know, uh, so I tip my hat to a lot of, uh, to a lot of players that I faced and they, and, and rightfully so they owned me. And that would be the, that would be the term that I would use. They owned me. So not everybody was scared. Not everybody, you know, had their tail between their legs when they came up. But I did the best I could in trying to intimidate them in some way, making that at bat difficult. If I was a linebacker, you know, or a defensive end, making that quarterback know yeah. I'm there every play, and I may not have tackled you, but... I'm right there, and I just ran right by you because I didn't want to get a flag. Yeah. But I'm there. I'm going to be your worst nightmare. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I would throw a ball up and in and then throw the next pitch right down the middle, <laughs> and I would have a kink in my neck because it just went 400 feet. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Max Crosby. I get it. I get it. Max Crosby yeah, is yeah. So, always so a I, re I, I respected my my peers, uh, but, but it was just – Kind of something that kind of came with my the territory that I pitched in. That was what I was. That's that's what I tried to tried to be. 
uh, and utilize the intimidation and fastball, um, much like, uh, say, a Nolan Ryan did back when he played, just a different uh, era. You're six and foot so there's, there's, there's not really anybody in today's game that really does that. You know, you can't throw a pitch up and in. Hitters don't understand, and pitchers don't do that because – you know, it's a, just a different uh, era uh, of baseball now. They don't uh, they don't pitch that way. So Ty is going to have a bunch of questions. He's a big baseball fan. Last one for me, because you talked about this being a different era and different baseball and everything. I think it was a game last night, hour and 49 minutes. Was yeah. Yep. Hour mm -hmm. and 49 minutes with the pitch clock and everything. How do you think you would have handled the modern day? And how do you think you would have been received if you were batting? Do you think this generation's soft? Big Ooh. unit, because there's a lot of ex NFL guys, right, who talk about the new rules and the new thing. The game's soft, game's soft. Now, ratings are higher than ever. I think participation is still going through the roof and everything. But the old generation obviously thinks that the modern way of hitting and tackling and unweighting yourself is all bullshit. Is that how you feel also about baseball? Is there a legion of you guys that think like that? And what do you think about the pitch clock hour 49 game? I think I think that's what they've been trying to get uh, out of baseball since I was playing. I I remember I remember uh, we would have conversations during spring training where umpires would come in and they would tell us that we're trying to quicken the game up for for the players and for the fans because nobody wants to be there for 3 hours, you know? And they were talking about trying to quicken up the game and shorten the game up in some capacity back when I was playing, and that was 15 years ago. And I think they've done a nice job of that. I remember going to minor league games a couple of years ago where they were implementing the time clock. And I, I was at two back-to-back -back games uh, in two days, and the games were, like you said, you know, a, a couple hours, and, and everybody enjoys a, a fast uh a fast game. Now the things that that uh, you know, and a lot of rule changes have happened, and you know it is what it is. That the one thing that I don't like because it would have been my profession, pitching, and that's that's my livelihood, and I wouldn't want anybody taking that away from me. But if I was pitching in today's game, the fact that you know there's a lot of analytics in today's game, and and the and the number crunchers say that you're going to have a better chance of getting a hit off me if you come up for a fourth time. And so I have to come out of the game and you have to see somebody else. I don't like that. I, I don't think that's necessarily true. The guy couldn't hit you me know? the first three times. <laughs> yeah. Now we're worried about the fourth time. Okay, what are we even doing here? That's uh, well, I think, I think that's what it, I think that's what, you know, when you turn the lineup over two times or you come up for a third time, that's about the sixth or seventh inning, you know, typically, and the starting pitchers coming out because they feel that's when the batting average for the opposing team goes up and the likelihood of you giving up a big inning starts, increases, because the hitters have seen you now. You know, I don't know how they can say that because the game's been around for 150 years <laughs> and, 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 and generations before me we're, we're pitching complete games, and they did okay, and in my era did okay. And, yeah, not everybody does okay. And the game should dictate what the game needs to be done with the person that's out there pitching. No. But, no, that doesn't make sense with the stats, Randy. You should see the NFL. But, we got to deal with this shit, too. We got to deal. But but what I feel, and, and, I, and I truly uh, – you know, love the game. There's a lot of great talent in all throughout all of baseball right now, pitchers and hitters, and and the game is great. But what I feel uh, is my job in pitching is I don't want someone to say that I'm not good for another 30 pitches uh, because you don't think it, it's in my mentality. Well. I was groomed in the minor leagues to to go uh, that, and I think. Um, I think starting pitchers in today's game uh, come out after five, six, seven innings, yeah. and that's because of the analytics. Uh, but I feel like you're, you'll become a better pitcher if by by going deeper in the game. You have an opportunity to to win more ball games by being out there. Randy, I just got a stat in my ear here from Tone Diggs. 
You have a hundred complete games. <laughs> Jesus. That's well, and, that's, and that's nothing. Some pitchers, you know, my, before my era had maybe 200. Yeah, that uh, was all, when there was six do... people on a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They ran 100 <laughs> complete games. That would never happen no. in the modern era. Now, Ty Schmidt is our big baseball guy. I've already taken too much time from him. Very pumped to talk to you, big unit. Yeah, Randy, one of the uh, big – Biggest moments of my life as a baseball fan, massive Yankees fan, is when they traded for you. Even though it was at the tail end of my career, I still, I, or at the tail end of your career, I still remember doing cartwheels. You know, realizing that the big unit was coming to pitch in Yankee Stadium, remembering you just ripping my heart out in the World Series with the oh. D-backs. But just curious, was there? I mean, you won four consecutive Cy Youngs, which that will sh- for sure never happen again. Was there ever a point when you went out on the bump where you just felt like, oh, I just don't have my best stuff today? Because as a fan, you look at the lineup card, you see Randy Johnson pitching. It's like, okay, well, he's at the very least going to have 12 strikeouts. He's going to go what? He's going to go eight innings. What? And if we're lucky, we might you know, scratch and claw uh, maybe one run off him. Did you ever go out there, especially in that dominant run, just thinking like, I just don't have it today. I don't have I don't have my best stuff. And if that ever did happen, like how did you grind and claw during those games when you knew that you were going to have to potentially still go deep in the game to to give your team the best chance to win? Well, I think that that made it made me the pitcher that I became. I was able uh, and I did just that. I would grind. I'd go out there and 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 understand that you're not going to have your best stuff every time you go out there and you got to you got to grind. You got to you got to be something that you're not sometimes and be able to get hitters out another way. I'm not going to have a 100 mile an hour fastball or, or my really good slider on any given day. You still you, I got to go out there. I'm not going to have my best stuff. Well, I still got to go out there and pitch. And so there was times where I'd warm up in the bullpen and, you know, I, I couldn't consistently hit the catcher or, or I couldn't hit the target. And I'm thinking this is going to be a rough day. And then all of a sudden when you, when you go out to the stadium mound and the, and the bell rings and you, and you take the mound for real, all of a sudden things click. And then there's been other times where I've thrown in the bullpen and I'm going, wow, this stuff's electric. I'm feeling great. And then I, and then, you know, I don't last an inning. You know, I walk a couple batters, give up a couple of bombs. The next thing I know, I'm down five nothing already. You're out. Go, go, go ice your arm and have a cold one. Okay, okay, cold one. I will talk. Okay, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Were you, uh, did we have a good time? Because we talk old school. We, we yeah. heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, just on his podcast the other day was like, you know, they try to get me into this nutritionist and get in the best shape of my life. He said, Sometimes I just need to smoke some cigarettes and drink some beers on a Wednesday, and I'd have my best stuff. And, like, in football, whenever I was in my first three years, the night before the games, we had ice cream, we had pizza, we had wings, there was beer, Ooh. you know? To, I mean, it was like, hey, we're going to come have a good time, we're going to hang out, there's a celebration, then tomorrow we're going to play a game. Then nutritionists came in, and they were assigned to every single team, and it was like, gone. All that's gone. This modern era, I don't think they drink alcohol as much or kind of do as much because their entire lives are monitored. I've heard some legendary tales about baseball players, especially being on the road, how it is. Were you a guy that dabbled while winning four straight Cy Youngs, or how did you kind of manage life on the road and celebrating a lot, obviously? I think my game, my, my, uh, the, the, the pitching philosophy for, for me early on was, you know, I was still learning mechanics, being at six foot 10 and, uh, being able to repeat my mechanics. That was the first problem that I had initially. Then when I got it worked out, um, you know, I started having fun because my ability, I was harnessing my ability and I was able to throw the pitches when I wanted, where I wanted. And, I, like I said earlier, I was no longer just launching a ball because I didn't have any control. I was launching it because I was trying to make an impact uh, or an impression at, at times. Um, and then when I when I got my mechanics down, well, then, you know, it's all about, you know, how, how can I become better? And then I learned more pitches. I was watching great pitchers. Um, that I that I looked up to, that I thought were the best in my era, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, Clemens, Pedro Martinez, people like that. How can I just watch from the sidelines and incorporate something that they're doing uh, and, and, and implement it in my game? And then, you know, uh, 
what can I do in the weight room? Uh, work a little bit harder cardio. Hey, if you're not separating yourself from the next guy, then you're no bet. Then you're just going to be as good as him. And and I wanted to be better than everybody. Uh, at least that was my mentality. And so I tried to work harder. And initially, I probably did mechanic wise because I was a you know I was a mess out there. Imagine in Bull Durham, I was I was six foot ten Nuke Lelouch out there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but then when I started going through that run of uh, some success. You know, I hired a nutritionist. You know, th that that stuff wasn't around in the 90s or in the early 2000s. It, towards the end of my career, that's when everybody started getting like, you know, eating properly. What you put in your body is what you get oh, out yeah. of your body. Oh, yeah. Tell tell Babe Ruth that he had a 12-pack of beer the night before and a couple of hot dogs, <laughs> exactly. and he would go out there and hit a couple of home runs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is – it is such an old school versus new school idea because it's like – Stats and science tell you if you're in your best shape, you should perform mm -hmm. at your ultimate level. But in team sports, I think teams come together much better around a keg than they do kale. Like, I think everything has a, uh, you know, I think, like, there is a reason for teams to come together. And it's, it's interesting how it's viewed by media, mm -hmm. the newer generation, mm -hmm. old school players. And then, like, the way, way back guys are like, you're, you guys don't smoke at halftime? What do we even – your me? lungs are too soft? We just got out of the mill. Okay, so we're running 100-yard gassers while smoking cigs. You guys are soft. It's like time is crazy, Randy. Mm -hmm. It is a crazy thing as we continue to evolve. But athletes are getting better. Speaking of athletes getting better, Connor has a question for you, Unit. Yeah, Randy, uh, obviously oh. pitching is very much between the ears. And a lot of guys have different, you know uh, – well, what's the word? Kind of routines that they go through before. Um, if they're superstitious, there it is. Did you have any of that uh, as far as pregame routines go? Were you wearing, you know, the same pair of underwear like Dan Hurley did for UConn, or were you just kind of like, "Hey, give me that ball. I'm gonna go out there and strike out 15 guys. We're gonna win this game." I just, I just think the mentality that I had. I just, you know, I never, I never wanted to, you know, uh, go out there and not be prepared um you know everything's a transition you know when i started getting my mechanics down i started having some success i was just wondering how can you get better you know learning more pitches being more prepared understanding the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent um you know being able to pitch accordingly um Things like that. And then, you know, a little bit of nutrition came into play. But I didn't I didn't have any, you know, um, things that I had to, you know, wear or live by. You know, I just went out there and I tried to do the best I could for my teammates. And and after a while, I understood that, you know, the fans came every fifth day because I was pitching and they're paying their hard earned money to come and watch me. And I'm an entertainer, if you will. Yeah. And I want to, I want to kill a bird. This guy's going to kill a bird, yeah. 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 Gonna kill a bird tonight. Wait. There's a chance yeah, we got a dead bird out here tonight. I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, I can't assume that that's going to happen inside a, the kingdom in Seattle oh. or a ball park, you know, what if the but, bench started letting out birds? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let the birds out. Let the birds out now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I tried to do the best I can and entertain them. And, and after a while, it, it became, you know, um, more about them than it was about what I was doing. You know, there was things that I would do that it was, you know, I was expected to do that because that's what you, you know, after a while, it's like you're you have a great game. Where you're, you're getting paid to do that. That's what you do. And then I think sometimes when you're doing some of these things that you know only a handful of people have ever done you just kind of take that for granted i think you know uh, i mean look at my mechanics here on this last pitch and then you look at it like you know 10 years later i mean i'm just all over the place just throwing the ball and that was in 1990 and then 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 a couple years later i have a nice conversation with nolan ryan and tom house the pitching coach for the texas rangers and they kind of helped me with my mechanics and instead of falling off towards third base like that last pitch, no hit here. Falling, this guy could, didn't I know how to pitch. Towards, there's nothing wrong with that, but but <laughs> you lose your arm, you lose your arm angle, and I was losing my velocity towards the end of the game. So when I so when I went with what they were teaching me, you know, I was going towards home plate. I would keep my arm angle, 
and I would go towards the, the batter instead of falling off towards third base. Man, it's amazing how much that is similar to kicking. Mm -hmm. You know, like kicking, you're trying to keep your body in line. I assume there was, I don't know if back in your day, no offense, not calling you old, but you get it. That was some standard death video we just watched. <laughs> Did they put lasers? Yeah. Hey, that, that wasn't black and white film there. <laughs> I'm sure we can find some for you. I mean, 22 years in there, but did you put the lasers on your shit? Did they do that whenever? That's what they do no, now. No, no, I don't think that. I don't think that was around then. <laughs> you dinosaur. <laughs> Before so, so, maybe, so maybe I am. No, maybe I am old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you got a whole new life. Tone's got a question for you. Yeah, Mister Unit, about that. So when you were in Seattle with Junior Griffey, um, did you guys just talk about that when you guys were done playing baseball that you guys were gonna, just going to dominate the photography game after you were done playing baseball because? It's awesome and hilarious to see you in, in these pits, photography pits and stuff like that on the sidelines of the of these uh, ball games. Six foot ten, right? There. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I've been I've been doing this since I went to college at USC. I studied photojournalism uh, then, and I worked for the college newspaper and got a better understanding of photography and all that, and I uh, really enjoyed it. And then that kind of took a backseat to my career that was about ready to happen, and I had to immerse myself into being the best that I could. Because I knew that was going to, I was hoping that would be my livelihood, not photography. Uh, and uh, luckily, uh, baseball worked out. And then after, you know, baseball uh, came to an end after 22 years, uh, then I, uh, you know, dusted off my camera and, and started going on some trips. And and, uh, and the next thing you know, uh, I've been to Africa six times and I've had an exhibit Um uh, in Cooperstown, New York, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. And, and right now, presently, I have an exhibit uh, in Scottsdale at the Scottsdale of the Performing Arts. So uh, nice. hey. my, my, my photography has got to next level. Uh, and Junior and I have talked. Junior is just kind of getting into it now. He's talked to me a couple of times about going to Africa because he knew that I had been going there. And so I think for me... It's just a passion. It gives me an outlet of trying to be creative and get my mind right and, and be focused. There's some parallel to photography and uh, pitching. You know, when I'm going to Africa or going somewhere on a photography trip, there's a lot of preparation. Well, it's no different than, you know, tomorrow I'm pitching against the Atlanta Braves and I got to know who's going to be in the lineup or most likely who's going to be in the lineup and know their, their strengths and weaknesses and then be able to go out and execute. Well, when I'm going on a photography trip, where am I going? What what up? What am you know? What type of the year am I going? What's the weather going to be like? What kind of camera gear do I need? What am I looking to uh, achieve there? Things like that. There's you, you need to put into time and effort, and then hopefully you get the results. Yeah, we're put. We're looking at the pictures right now. I mean, Damn. yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. Uh, that's, uh, you told that the zebras to line uh, up right there. You said, "Hey, right here, single file. Wow. <laughs> I'll throw yeah, a baseball exactly, in your head. Yeah, yeah. Ask, hey, hey, ask the bird over here. Yeah, look at me. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, six trips to Africa. I, I've been watching some videos on the internet. You need not be in one of those uh, vehicles with one of those right there when an elephant is pissed off. <laughs> mm -hmm. These Look elephants have been no, knocking these things over. Yeah. And these elephants, they talk. Yeah, they talk mm -hmm. to each other. They're knocking these things over. Look at that shot. Are you in there? That's You're not, in the safari doing nothing this? For an, that's nothing for an elephant to get mad and knock that thing over. So what are you doing? You're, you, yeah, got full, the, uh, you got full... You got full... You got like full uh, ghillie, suit. ghillie suit on. You're out there two, three days. You're sneaking up on these animals. How, how's this whole thing work? Well, I just, uh, you know, I initially went. It was a family trip, and then I got more involved in it, and I really enjoyed it. And it was a great outlet for me to do photography, and and uh, and I just really had a great time. You know, like I said, uh, preparing where I was going, and it wasn't just the animals that I was seeing. It was a lot of trips that, you know, I would go to – you know, a uh, remote area like I'd go to Rwanda uh, and go trekking up into the mountains and go see the silverback gorillas. That was something different than seeing a lion or something. You know, I'd go I'd go and do that, but I would go and, you know, see a 700 pound linebacker walking through a bamboo forest. <laughs> That's, that uh, what's that cheetah that was staring at you right there? The not this one, not the sand one, the next uh, leopard, uh, leopard. A, yeah. A leopard. yeah, a leopard. We were driving around uh, around a perimeter of a hilltop and we knew there was a leopard up there. And uh, we couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden, he popped out and said, here I am. I know you guys are looking for me. Here I am. I know where you are, too. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you think, uh, was it at that moment you thought about this? 
Leopard has no idea. Where's my bag of baseball? Where's my ball? I will put that thing high and tight on that (laughs) shit. You keep looking at me like that. I think think seeing this stuff and taking a picture of that – yeah, that's uh, it's just pretty cool stuff. And mm-hmm. there's obviously a lot more, a lot more photographs that are on display from Ethiopia. And, and I had a pretty, uh, pretty interesting time in Ethiopia and, and seeing the Ethiopian people there and understanding how they live and and, and their culture, and uh, and being able to take some photographs of them. And then and then this stuff just kind of comes back 180. You know, when we were growing up, I'm a little bit older than you, but when you're growing up and you're in sixth or seventh grade, you're looking at the uh, National Geographic with the with the Ethiopian lady with the plate in her lip. Well, you know, I've been to Ethiopia on a couple of different occasions. I'm taking these pictures of the same thing Mm. and I'm catching myself thinking, wow, I remember when I was a younger kid looking at these pictures. Now I'm taking them and I'm putting them on an exhibit myself. Pictures from the picture. It's really yep, a beautiful. There thing. it is. So mm-hmm. cool. And uh, we're so thankful you joined us today. I, I know that the world is going to want these bird ballparks. DirectTV.com yes, yes. forward slash bird ballparks. You could potentially win one of these uh, little bird stadium things. Sweet. And then also a millet mullet. Mm-hmm. With millet is bird feed with the mullet in the shape of what Randy had whenever he was a four straight Cy Young winner. Would win another one for five Cy Youngs. Absolute stallion. We appreciate you so much for joining us. Hopefully we'll get to talk to you soon. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate it, man. Hey, no sleep till Brooklyn. Great shirt, man. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the big year to Randy Johnson. Yeah, yeah, Randy! Yeah, yeah. I was trying to make it a hard time whenever they were in there. Yeah, yeah. Just knowing that he's six foot ten up on a mound. Mm-hmm. So you're literally looking like that. Seven, oh, yeah, that ball gets on you quick. Well, then he just yeah. buzzes, he buzzes the tire yep. real quick. And it's like, okay, all right. Am I just going to eat one from the big unit right now? I Maybe. hope not. And then he brings a <laughs> crook, that all-star at bat. So oh, sweet. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. Just, okay. Hilarious. All right. Yeah. I get it. You have that in the arsenal. <laughs> yeah. And then busts his ass with three right down the middle after that and strikes him out. Yeah, and, and Kruk is literally bouncing out of the... Yeah. 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 I don't step in the bucket. It, it looks time. like Henry Rowan Gardner. Okay, in his first at bat, yeah. where he gets called up for the Cubs in the back corner yep. of the batter's box. Just what a moment. What a stud. I had no idea that we could potentially have Randy Johnson on the show. Yeah. So cool. As soon as it showed up, I was like, yeah, I don't know much about baseball, but I know the big unit. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I would like chat with him. A deep guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six trips to Africa taking photos. Mm-hmm. He's got something in Scottsdale. He's got something yeah. in uh, Cooper's, he said. I think yeah, Cooper's Cooperstown. Town, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Baseball. Too much talk of baseball. Baseball? Oh, we're talking to baseball studs. Yeah, exactly. Like when you're talking to a Randy Johnson or a CC. It's not Sebastian. about baseball. You're talking to athletes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you're talking to icons here. I mean, 4,800 strike. I, I, I'm a noted, not big baseball guy. Love Randy Johnson. Uh, Hembo sent me this text in the middle of this interesting stat. Had Randy Johnson never thrown a single pitch in his 20s, he would still rank fourth on the all-time strikeout list in the history <laughs> of the MLB. Jeez. Get to a break. Hour two will be on the other side. We got A.J. Hawk joining us and Brian Windhorst. Yes. Windy. Come on. Talking yes. about what the hell's going on in the NBA. Playing games, playoffs, banishment for life. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take three. 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 It's impossible to be at the top at both of those, essentially. Like, it's... it's oh, okay. Dan, oh, Dan. Oh, Another oh, farting Dan Orlovsky oh, situation oh, just took place. Like. Danny Dumps. What do you mean? It's unbelievable. No, 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 your butt is talking. Back. Okay. I right. did not fart. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan, Dan. This is two times now, Dan. This is the Orlovsky thing. You guys be serious right now or are you messing with me? Dan. Dan. Listen to this clip. This is you just moments ago. It's impossible to be at the top at both of those. Essentially, like it's. it's oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, it's undeniable. You guys definitely. You guys definitely. No freaking idiot. No, I swear. We swear. We swear. No. 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 We swear. We swear. There's no way. There's no one did that there. No, 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 that was cartoons. What did you eat? I haven't even ate. Hey, <laughs> if I were you right now, I'd go grab some yeah. food. Water. My wife texted me. She said, oh, my gosh, McAfee show. I'm dead. I go, babe, I promised you on everything. I did not fart. Who runs your Twitter account? AB. I do. 
was this all about? I would like to know, in that situation where your butthole started talking, mm -hmm. what did I do? I can't even be serious with you, man. What, are you chucking a glass of milk? Eat some yeah. food over there? Get you some coffee? Get that butthole a little bit more asking, active? I haven't ate. I'm eating yogurt. I have a thousand text messages right now with people going, oh my gosh. I'm like, <laughs> I just wanted to have like a quiet Tuesday. I don't even know why we're going to have another hour. Maybe run that clip. Just, yeah. Yeah. I'll move. We have the video, Shams. Let's let you judge here. It's impossible to be at the top at both of those. Essentially, like it's. <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear the context. I want to give our guy. Oh, Shams, shut up! He said it sounded like a fart. What did AJ vote? It's a fart all day long, Kurt. You know that. Has anybody voted no? Dan, I'll be the captain of Team No today. We need you to do a tie-breaking vote. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. It's impossible to be at the top at both of those. Essentially, like it's. There's no doubt. I mean, I, yeah. I like how. He just kept on going right there. When he was talking, he didn't even break stride as that thing came out. He went and got the buggy, went to the store, grabbed some dude wipes to wipe those ass cheeks, just like I assume you do as welcome. You have to go dry, wet, dry. Toilet paper, white toilet paper. If not, you're really risking the rest of the day having the swamp ass. You no, know, Dan Orlovsky, man, he gotta accept that, man. He gotta <laughs> wear that with a pride. One thing that really bothers me when people do not take credit for it. You know, if somebody says, oh, that was you that farted, I get upset when it wasn't me. I'm like, no, when have I ever not claimed it when it was mine? You should claim it. But all those airports, people are traveling today, looking up at the ESPN, Dan Orlovsky farts. What's wrong with this guy? The closed captioning person, whoever it is, they got it. I believe it said inaudible, muffled, muffled, and it said Dan farts, exclamation mark. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this big unit Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Sports! Our wonderful and sports create legends and icons, and we just got done chatting with one of them and Randy Johnson. Randy, thank you for taking the time to join us. Can't wait to go on a uh, photog trip with you to Africa someday. Hell mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I won't go to Uganda, though, see the soft ground wrestling organization okay be cool i don't know if you've seen that promotion happening Pretty down there that yeah. is where i would like to head to first but then if we need to go out to the safari to take some photos i'm certainly down with that not getting in one of those cars though no no because these elephants have just been running wild with their tusks mm -hmm. at evan foxy the man who pushes the controls to yep. get the cameras and edits the videos here you went down there yeah. and you were letting this elephant just drink out of his pool yeah wild. i saw these videos did you know that that elephant a smarter than you B, will remember you forever. Yeah. And then C, could have picked that pool up and dumped it on you and your fiance if it wanted to. Did you know that? Yeah, we knew that was possible, but that one was really friendly. That one was nice. Now, when we entered Africa, the very first animal we see is an elephant, and he was not happy. He chased us down. The guide said, nope, we're not stopping. He's pissed off because he wants to mate. So that's when they get mad oh. is when they want to mate. Oh, so he wanted to bone your car? Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. So he saw us. He's he was all around. pissed. I want, I want bone this body. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Bumper on that thing. And he's going to take an elephant dog. Look at the muffler. Look <laughs> yeah. at the muffler yeah. on that one. I don't know if it can handle me, but we're going to find out. Yeah, so that happened to us twice on the trip. It was actually really awesome. Think about how handsome Foxy is, too, with his yeah. big dumb oh, face. Yeah. Oh. That elephant was right away. I won't Look at give you a around. piece of that. Those yeah. ears are. Mm -hmm. That's your fault, Foxy. You jeopardized everybody's life. Hope you're happy. The Toxic <laughs> Tip was here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con Man, next Thursday night, Draft Spectacular with Bill Belichick on YouTube, ESPN.com, ESPN Plus, Bye. and TikTok Live. Live, jacked up six to midnight for sure. Yeah, cannot wait. And I do feel like the uh, ESPN.com crowd is going to really come through. Uh, I, yeah. uh, you mentioned it earlier. I think those those yeah. uh, elder statesmen of this planet they they might be hammering that URL up there. I, I'm looking forward to it. There way. may or may not be some 30 second commercials coming to a TV near you. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
explaining to people how they could potentially find our show on Draft Spectacular Evening. Now, we understand that every single day we're at least one hour only on the internet. And we know that we lived for the last six years only on the internet. But there's a lot of humans that if they hear Bill Belichick's doing something, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Mm. I like to listen to that guy. Check yeah. that guy. So where do I go? ABC? No, ABC has a phenomenal broadcast with the College Game Day crew. Nick Saban will be there. Yep. Oh, so I go to ESPN. No, ESPN will have Mike Greenberg, Mel Kuyper, yep. uh, Field Yates, I believe, uh, the whole team mm -hmm. there on ESPN. ESPN too? No, NHL playoff game. So yep. where? So what's, I heard, I heard, I heard Bill Belichick's do. Where's that at? It's on the internet. That's right. Great. Great. Not doing that. Everything I like has to change. So we are going to make this as easy as possible for people. We're going to make a 30-second commercial. We are going to flood some channels yep. with these 30-second commercials. Mm -hmm. And ESPN.com, I think, is the easiest way to find it. YouTube.com should be. It should. You would think it may be up there. But if their algos aren't sports algos, yeah, good luck. that ain't going to get there. You know, if you tell them go to TikTok, okay, you're talking no about chance. that. Yeah, you're talking about the China platform. Yeah, not mm. doing it. Okay. No yeah. way. Man, I don't know if I dance. It's next? I don't think so. My face. So we're not going to promote that one. ESPN Plus. Oh, I got to download it. Of course. Got to download, download an app. App is what you get for half price at Applebee's. That's right. I ain't downloading another app. So I think ESPN.com is the easiest way for the no offense. This is a compliment. Mm -hmm. The olds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this year, will we see an uptick in that particular demo? Yep. A lot of people say they don't care about that demo. A lot of people say, "Whoa, get the olds out of here." Gee, who that's says what people that? say. I'm not saying who that's what people say. Well, they always say, "Well, what's the rating?" You know, from 18 to 49. Well, for our particular program, uh, on the internet or analytics, 93 percent mm -hmm. uh, is from 18 to 49. Okay, okay? then you got like four percent is younger, and then like three percent is older than. This draft spectacular, it's going. I think so. We're the getting roof. the olds. 90%. Come on in. The water's just fine. Let's go to ESPN.com, and it should be right in front of you. And I think this draft is about to be the best draft that we've ever had. For sure. Because we have a never ending supply of football information mm -hmm. sitting on the, the desk with us. And I saw some reaction, you know, was. Uh, negative, majority positive. Sure. Right, you're getting this boring ass dude. Hey, what you see at those press conferences, okay? I think in his eyes, I don't know him that well. I don't know him as well as other people. I think he potentially thought that was hilarious to do mm -hmm. that. I think whenever he's talking, he is a hilarious person. If you listen to how he's saying what he's saying, he, and we will certainly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have a little faith. Have a little faith. And for those of you that said, why are you having him on the draft? GM, what is that? Because when I introduced him yesterday as the greatest general manager of all time, I had some people that say, I'm a Patriots fan, and I don't even believe that. Well, well you're not. a doofus then. Yeah, How about exactly. that? Everybody talks about him being the greatest coach of all time because it's Coach Bill Belichick. Well, he was also the general manager for the greatest dynasty in the history of professional sports. Six Super Bowls as a general manager win. Most Super Bowls of any NFL GM ever. Nine-time AFC champion. Eight consecutive AFC championships at one point during the run. Thirteen AFC championship appearances. Has had three Hall of Famers just now. Yep. But then you start adding in Will Fork, Vinatieri, mm -hmm. Bruce. You start going through all of them. It's yeah. going to end up probably double digits in this entire thing. Yeah, but he couldn't draft good. Okay. Okay. Well, how about winning football games as a general manager? Greatest of all time, and we're lucky to be sharing the draft set with him. And I'm sure he's excited to potentially give some takes on, like, the first 10 picks. Yes. Something that he didn't see yeah. for, like, 20 years as the Patriots GM because they won so many games that they had a late draft pick. And life is – obviously, they've certainly found great draft picks later in the draft. Brock Purdy's Mr. Rowland. That's the last pick of all time. That's right. But it's a much different conversation on hitting and missing at like uh, six, seven, five, than it is at 30, 28, 29, Bingo. 30, oh, yeah. let alone everywhere else. And it's like, I don't understand why the disrespect is the way it is about him being a general manager. The guy's the only guy that's ever had in the history had success doing both. And he's done it more so than anybody else. I don't, I, I, I don't get that. As it, a Colt, yeah, I'm an Indianapolis exactly. Colt saying that. I don't, I don't get why that's never a part of the combo. It's solely the draft. I mean, it's it, it, we've been dealing with it for the last four years. The conversation if Bill Belichick has lost it, the everybody points to. Well, look at it, look at his draft picks. He hasn't re-signed a, a first round uh, draft pick since you know twenty. 
2010 or whatever the hell it was. But, I mean, you, you said at the end of the first round, that's where they always were, selfishly as a Patriots fan. I wish that he could have had the experience of drafting in the top five like we do this year. That's going to be unbelievable. But uh, the Hall of Famer thing, like, sure, the Hall of Fame is where everyone's going. The amount of players that he got – that weren't great through trades. I mean, I, I, and I, this isn't a shot at Kyle Van Noy whatsoever. Kyle Van Noy has accepted and said, I believe, on this show, hey, when I got to Detroit, my expectations were high. I was a you know second, third round pick, and I had to perform, and I didn't start my career off very well. We get Kyle Van Noy, and he immediately is one of the better players, if not one of the best players on our defense. Like The, the amount of times that happens just on its own. Jabal Sheard, he, he came over, yeah. immediate impact. Martellus Bennett, first rounder, he comes over. Basically, I mean, I won't say he won the Super Bowl in Atlanta, but people forget pass interference. Martellus Bennett set up the James White touchdown. They actually tried to throw it to Martellus Bennett on a fade. But the amount of times that happened, Legarrette Blunt. where Legarrette Blunt and like the Hall of Fame thing, are they counting like Revis, or are they only saying the amount of players that he drafted? Yeah, Randy that Moss. Were, Randy Moss, because like I, I can think of five off the top of my head, so I'm not sure about that. But still, like the amount of players' careers that he changed, like Randy Moss was traded for a fourth round pick. People kind of wrote Randy Moss off mm-hmm. at when he went to the Raiders. Randy Moss comes to New England. He breaks the single-season touchdown record with Tom Brady. Like, the amount of times that happened doesn't well, and get— And he drafted Tom Brady. Bingo, So, so yeah. like, uh, pick 199. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if it wasn't for Tom Brady, he'd be nothing. Well, who drafted yeah. Yeah. Tom Brady? Who taught and coached Tom Brady? Who who does Tom Brady give like a— him so like enough. I, I just I, it, it I, I don't. It was the Youngs, Pat. It was the Youngs. Yeah, those people who say that he isn't a good GM, I, I am leaning towards Tony. Like I don't think they fully grasp what football is. Well, this is kind of in um, this is incredibly stupid. Like the way we're going about doing our thing in sports media. Okay, like we license our show to ESPN. Mm-hmm. We own the show. We have full creative freedom. We are the ones deciding what goes on, what doesn't go on. Not somebody else. That was tough for a lot of people to understand because it did it hadn't happened that mm-hmm, way yeah. in a lot. So there'd be a lot of things being said, and it's like, no, nah, that's not how this goes. With him being the GM and the coach, people aren't used to that. So it's not like a normal thing. Well, there had to be somebody else. Like, no, he's mm-hmm. the he's the one. Well, there's no way he was able to do both. Exact. That's what we're saying. Yeah, he was able to do both. Yeah. Now he had great assistants. Casario was in there. Lombardi came in mm-hmm. at different times. Like, there's a lot of greatness that has come from his general manager tree, even though we talk about his coaching tree. But it's like the lack of respect on him as a GM was just like befuddling from some of the people that I saw yesterday and on college game day when I said it to mm-hmm. him, to his yeah. face. There were some people that responded like, GM, yeah, right. It's like, so if there was any other general manager <laughs> and they were the general manager for the greatest dynasty in the history of sport and had more Super Bowls than anybody else and had more AFC championship appearance than anybody, like, would that GM be yep. the greatest GM? Yes. Bingo. So what are we even talking about here? I don't fully understand. We get him for the entire first round alongside of how our dumbasses, mm-hmm. one half of the hammer, dad, Cowboys Town Diggs. And, uh, and you talk about drafting at the end at least 13 times within the bottom four if you're going to the AFC championship 13 times, um, at least. Uh, Brandon Bean came out today and said, we don't have a graph, uh, first round graph trade for 28 guys. So they're picking at 28 or whatever. So, and, and he said that's more than they had, but they have more first round draft grades this year than they did last year. So I assume teams all the time, like there's not 32 first round draft grades on these guys. So you're you're taking guys that that are more of a, a risk. And when you're yeah, but you got to remember late. the way the draft is covered is everybody's hall of famer. Yeah, yep. everyone's yeah. a hall of famer. Everybody's a hall of famer. If it doesn't work out, well, what, what happened then? Well, some situations are certainly, uh, you know tough and coaching and uh, players in front of people and maybe injuries take place and you get unlucky and everything like that. But also, like, sometimes you're just not able to make a team because the draft class ahead of you, the draft class 10 years ahead of you still has a guy (laughs) taking up a spot. Mm -hmm. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's a tough thing, and I don't understand. Joining us now is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. Actually saw him uh, yeah. Win the Super Bowl this morning against yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers on NFL Network. Sweet. And people forget in the first quarter, he had a reception. He did. Aaron Rodgers has uh, Brett Kiesel crashing down on him. Mm-hmm. Aaron overthrows Jordy. Who's on the sideline to catch that thing? A.J. Hawk. Yep. Wow. That's yep. first quarter. That's right. His awareness, first quarter of the Super Bowl, is at an all time high. His hands, phenomenal. He's currently. The president of Ohio. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. A.J., you remember catching that ball in the first quarter? I do remember catching (laughs) an errant throw by Aaron. Maybe I think he threw it away, didn't he? Uh, he, 
Kiesel was in it. Ish. In yeah, we'll say it was a throw. Kiesel was a monster. I, all respect to Kiesel. He is a monster. I'd get rid of that thing. Well, so are you. We saw you. Uh, Tackle think, AB. Yeah. Destroyed him. Yeah, there was. you had a big game. Hey, you had a big Super Bowl. I don't know about that. I tell you what. Yeah, I, I'm very happy we won. No question about that. <laughs> very happy we won. That's yeah, all that matters. Don't have to redo that game. Yeah, happy, happy we <laughs> yeah. won that one and got on it. I just did a... You know, because the announcement of Bill Belichick yesterday obviously goes big. A lot of very positive things. But then if you see some of the comments, it's like, why would you want Bill for the draft? Like, he's not dra- – like, what are we even talking about? Why would you not want Bill for the draft? <laughs> he's been in the NFL for 40-some years straight. This is his first time he's going to be experiencing the draft that he's not, like, drafting people or taking a big part of it. And if you watched even two seconds of when he came on yesterday, mm-hmm. the dude was very talkative and seemed, like, very engaged, and he wants to, like – he was teasing things. Like he wants to do a good job. Like it's going to be fun for the good of the sport. Like he he yeah. loves the sport. Bingo. Loves the sport. Loves the league. Like passionate about it. For the good of everybody here, let's make sure we do this right. It's kind of how the conversation has gone with him. In the amount, like how open he's been. Like yes, we have conversation. I have conversations with him in the morning and here, and the boys get to hear it, and we're kind of scheming. Like the amount of things where he has an idea. Okay, he wants to do it. But then at the end, he'd go, oh, you tell me. Is that what we're doing? I'm like, you tell me. Is that what we're doing? He's like, not my show. This is your show. It's like, well, it sounds like. Sounds like <laughs> sounds like you have some ideas, yeah. though. Look, we mm-hmm. need to not harness these things. He's like, all right, good. We'll do that then. I'm like, sweet. And he's like, we need to explain stuff to people, don't we, before the draft starts? Don't you think, like, before things happen, we need to do it? So you want to do, like, a countdown or a kickoff to his show, like, 30 minutes beforehand? Yeah, yeah, that should be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are we going to talk about? I was like... You to, what do you think we should talk about? He's like, well, there's all these conversations about like best available versus need and all these other trade t- conversations and point values for all these things. Like all these things that get talked, we should talk about those. And then like kind of I'll give my take on it. My take is not how everybody views it. Our board is not how everybody's board is going to be. But at least we'll be able to debunk some things and hopefully further explain some things. I'm like, I love it. It has been a Huge honor getting a chance to chat with him. And next Thursday, I think he is going to be electrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am very pumped up about it, AJ. I mean, think how many, like, the millions of questions are going to pop up that we're just going to try to pepper him with, with everything that is going on. I know Lombardi talks about they have a pretty unique grading system on how they grade players. A lot of other teams, I think, have carried on that same grading system. So I'd like, yeah, it'd be fun to ask Bill, like, hey, is that still what you, what you guys do? Is that what you did for this? Like, all of it. He is an artist with the F word. Mm-hmm. An artist. Nice. Picasso. An absolute artist. I, I don't know if that is very well known. You know, I know that him not talking or uh, not drinking coffee a day in his entire life made uh, political news last yep. night. Yep. That Fair. was a big deal. I, I think the more things we learn about him, there's going to be bigger news. But I think what we're going to learn on next Thursday night is his brain is just still yeah. and has the memory to 1982 draft mm-hmm. on. Probably even <laughs> earlier than that. It's absurd. All of that aside, I mean, he talked about it yesterday doing trades with Andy. He's done He's done trades with, what, 30 probably of the 32 GMs just because there's a couple new GMs this year. So he can give us an insight because he knows these people personally. He's worked with them for 20 plus years on what they are thinking too. Listen to this shit. He called me this morning and rattled off three GMs and was like, do we want to talk to this guy? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I know draft night's pretty busy. He goes, well, once they make the pick, though, there's really nothing unless they're going to trade again. There's really nothing going on. I'm like, if we could talk, that'd be cool. He goes, yeah, it won't be a problem. I'm like, boom. He's booking. Bill's booking the show. Yeah, yeah unreal. Exactly. <laughs> Bill Belichick is booking the show. It is. Uh, he's fully invested. We're very grateful. We can't wait for next Thursday night. We hope you will join us. Let's pivot away from the NFL. Let's go to the NBA. There's a lot going on. Obviously, playoffs are starting. The playing games just took place. And there's a lifetime banishment that just took place because of a sports gambling situation. Two, break it all down. Ladies and gentlemen, ESPN, NBA pundit, and all-star. Mm-hmm. Hey, now. You're an all-star. Get your game, game on. on. Go, Go play. Talk. Okay. Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Windhor. Yeah, yeah Wendy! Wendy! What's up, Wendy? Special hello to Mr. Hawk, <laughs> one of my all-time favorite Buckeyes, who I will always acknowledge as such when I'm honored to be on. That's just the way it's going to be. Sorry, everyone else. Hey, let's not have a Greg Appreciate Doyle situation you, here, but I <laughs> – I do uh, appreciate Mr. you. Mr. Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> right back I mean it, baby. I mean it. And I still think you were robbed with the Lombardi trophy or the Butkus trophy. I'm, I'm still I'm not over it. I hope you are. 
Right. Right back at you, Wendy. The old the old heart situation. I don't even know everything that went on with Greg Doyle, but that sounded weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know everything that went on. And then there was a couple follow-ups and then an article, obviously, a column. And got then, worse. Got I worse. mean, it only got worse. <laughs> yeah, it only, kept getting worse. It only got worse. Uh, let's pivot away from that. Wendy, I appreciate you acknowledging our uh, Ohio chief, yeah, yeah, man. Yep. AJ Hawk, as well. It's, <laughs> it's very kind of you. Uh, Wendy, uh, the boys will talk about the playing games and everything. I want to talk about the controversy. Okay, I want to talk about the controversy. <laughs> We've had it in the NFL a couple of different times where players, because of the ability to track everything that's happening on all these apps and different family members potentially signing in and on uh, premises, these bets taking place, guys have gotten caught. There's been a year-long ban. Now, we believe it's the reason why it's a year-long ban and on a eternal ban is because they weren't betting on their own teams uh, to lose. That's happening in the NBA, and what all do we know about this situation? Is the NBA scared that there's more to this than just John Tay Porter, or do they think that this is all that it is? Well, I don't think the investigations are over and even outside the NBA. So, But the NBA got enough to act here. So he did, according to the league, he did at least three things that even if any one of them would have probably got him banned. One, he obviously appeared to alter his own performance for a bet, which is in this case he took himself out of a game – where he said he was sick, and there was major action, in a, including a seven-figure bet that ended up uh, a parlay that ended up not being paid out, and um, on basically built around him not playing. So that's number one. He altered his own performance. Number two, he communicated with gamblers about inside information with the team, which is a huge no-no in the NBA, and these players are told repeatedly about it because, especially in the NBA, player availability in an individual game is humongous information and often is kept secret even when it's known. So even though the NBA has changed their rules to more mimic the NFL uh, in recent years to try to get more accurate and timely injury information, and they've even fined some teams for not accurately doing it, one of the holes in the NBA's uh, system, in my view, is there's at least several dozen people know that a star player is not going to play in the afternoon and the player is listed as questionable. Sometimes it's listed as doubtful and they've gotten better with that. But we see all the time star players listed as questionable and then they're out. And so a player who is computing in with, with gamblers and inside information, big no-no. So that was strike two. Strike three, obviously, wagering on the NBA. And in this case, wagering on his own team. Now, to Luke lose, says, Wendy, to lose. Right. Well, and look, it, the Raptors, I think, lost like 20 of their last 23 games. Betting against the Raptors wasn't exactly an outrageous position. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say, you know what? You know what's crazy about this to me? And I don't know, John Tay, I've never met him. The Raptors were tanking after the middle of the season. They traded away a couple of their, their star players. They were highly incentivized to go way down because their pick, if it was – um, lower than six or lower, they kept it. If it was seven or higher, it went to San Antonio. So they were highly incentivized to lose. And as a result, they traded away star players. They, you know, there was a couple of other unfortunate situations where there were players who had death, deaths in their families and they were away from the team. And so players, like at the end of the bench and two-way players, were getting opportunities to play and show themselves the rest of the league. And John Tay was getting those chances. This is a guy who his story is actually kind of an inspiring story. He blew his ACL twice in college, tore his ACL, then was recovering, tore it again within a year. Then he was in the league for a cup of coffee two years ago and out of the league for two years. This is a common story. A guy gets a chance, doesn't make it. We never see him again. Next thing you know, whatever happened to that guy? Well, he's playing in Lithuania. He's playing in Australia. He's playing in China. This guy now got back to the league. And now he's playing because his team is tanking, and he actually was having a couple of good games. He had a, one of the reasons why the sports books were putting prop bets up was because he was having games where he had ten points, six rebounds, six assists. He was actually potentially keeping himself in the league, and for him to take that situation and spike it by him by spiking his own games, that's a stunning, that's stunning to me. Like I said, I don't know him, uh, I don't know his personality, but. Yeah. That's one of the most fascinating things about this story. Amen. And it turns out that he was only allegedly 21,000 bucks. Jeez. Okay. 21,000 bucks net positive in gambling, 50 some thousand. But then you think about that $80,000 wager. Yes. That yes, turned, but. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. turned yeah. into a million dollars. A, the sports book goes, ah, 
million bucks, huh? One night? Okay. Mm. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. You know, they say pigs get fed, mm. hogs get slaughtered. It's like in this particular case, way too alarming. Like, it's also dumb. Not only is it like uh, illegal and... Wide. You know, all these other things that you could potentially throw. It's incredibly dumb the way they went about doing it. It, it just, all of it's stupid. And I guess no league is above these types of situations taking place. But the stern punishment will hopefully be enough for the NBA guys to realize that this is something that can't happen as the NFL has tried to do this. And the MLB with Shohei and his translator, they've had to deal with it. It's like sports gambling is going to be around, but we can't let it destroy our leagues that we love because then everything's gone. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say this: the, the league can say we caught this pretty fast. Maybe we don't know everything about it, but they caught it pretty fast. Within about forty-eight hours of this second event, they had him already sort of deactivated. You, you know, career basically pulled the plug on him, and they, you know, they would never say this, but he's kind of a perfect player to make an example of. With all due respect, no Why one's going to miss him. All due respect. Yeah. Well, he bet against his and own team. His brother's going to miss him. him. His brother's going to miss no, his him. His well, brother's going to de- disown yeah. him. He bet against his own team. You think about no team wants to sign a guy that's betting against his own no. team. No. Nobody wants that. I mean, that you're right. That is not a bad situation yeah. to make an example out of him. But the example needs to be made so that people don't, like, we don't, this can't happen. As sports media members, mm-hmm. okay, and sports fans, this can't happen. All these leagues can't get ruined by this. While sports gambling is coming in, even though we love sports gambling, like we enjoy it. Love it. We think you got to do it responsibly. You got to be smart. You got to be of age. And the legalized sports gambling has regulated it so much to protect people from themselves. Hopefully. That is the goal in the end of this whole thing. But it can't ruin the leagues. And I think we're all on the same page. Good news. AJ has a question for you. Wendy, our Ohio chief. Yes, Wendy, uh, move, uh, the Olympics. So the rosters came out. Uh, it's official now. What do you think of the rosters? What do you think our chances are of just running through the competition over there? And also, is, does anyone have a valid argument that you think got left off the team? Well, we're not going to run through it because I'm telling you. Oh, Wendy, Olympic- you anti-American oh, no. piece of trash. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, I cannot, but you're from Ohio. What the you're hell? You're from Ohio? You got that right. The heart of it all. Well, it doesn't sound like Ohio, it. England, maybe. Yeah, what does that even <laughs> mean? I know. Yeah. The this internet, I know the ba- it's hard to care about basketball in July and August because that's when the tournament's going to be, and we're going to go through this next two months of high intensity NBA, and then it's going to be we're going to be watching football training camp stuff, and it's like oh yeah, by the way, there's these games, but this Olympic tournament yes. coming up in Paris will be the highest level international basketball okay. event in the history of the sport. There are going to be absolute bloodbaths over there. Hell yeah! And unfortunately. This team that we've put out this week is only a wish list because we have played four games of playoff basketball so far, and we've already got two stars hurt. Zion, you know, hurt his hamstring, and Jimmy Butler hurt his knee last night. Mm -hmm. And so it's great for that LeBron at his age and and Embiid, despite his injury history, and, you know, Durant, who owes a Team USA nothing, he's been the greatest Team USA player in history is going to go through and play all this when they really have earned their, their summers off. But we just don't know who's going to be healthy between now and Tyrese and Halliburton's not losing to any other country. No chance. <laughs> Tyrese, Tyrese Halliburton was awesome for Team USA last year. There was actually a World Cup last summer. Nobody paid attention to it, really. It was happening in the middle of the night. I was there. It was in the Philippines. <laughs> we finished fourth. Yeah. We Ooh. lost three times. We lost three times to European yep. teams. Well, that's when LeBron and put out the tweet, said, I'm playing. Never again. Yeah. We're doing this shit. Right. Isn't that what happened? He rallied the boys. He was like, hey, one last. Yeah. And over. I hope LeBron. Yeah. And I mean, and LeBron the other night at the end of that game, after dealing with Zion twice in 72 hours, was dead. His legs were dead. So I'm hoping that he's. Whoa. I mean, last year he had to shut it down the whole summer to deal with the foot injury. Like, I'm just hoping. These guys are healthy. So, yeah, there are snubs. Like, you could say, why didn't Jalen Brunson make it? Jalen Brunson's one of the top five players in the league this year. People are upset that Kyrie Irving didn't make it, especially because Kyrie was one of the guys who said, I want to play. And he's played in the past. Guys who have played in the past tend to typically get, like, special credit. But just because you're your favorite player or if you're one of these players and not on the list, first off, there's still one roster spot. Second off, we got to see who's healthy. Kawhi, I thought, got the last one. Did he? Oh, that's right. You're correct. 
You're informing me. Oh! Basketball program. (laughs) Basketball program. Well done, guys. All cutting edge, as usual. (laughs) Wendy, it sounds like you took a little shot there. Okay, we don't know if Norby put you up to it or not. We do appreciate it. I'm sorry, who? It's been a... uh, Anytime USA is competing in anything, like the Olympics, it is just a reason to be obnoxiously patriotic. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like we're maybe not going to be able to just be blindly talking shit to everybody. But if Kyrie Irving can't make the team, I got a lot of faith in what we're going to do to whoever. Let's talk about another country stud. Connor's got a question for you, Wendy. Yeah, Wendy, obviously, you know, with the playoffs starting, the playing games are awesome. I feel like they've been a huge success. But the teams that are already in, um, the Bucs in particular, Giannis, he is not playing on Sunday against the Pacers. What is his status going forward? And this is kind of, it feels as though something that's been lingering. Is there a worry that there is a possible uh, Kevin Durant, Toronto Raptors situation where it's been a strain for a long time and then, you know, there is that chance that it could turn into Achilles or is this a completely different type of thing? Boy, wasn't it worrisome the way he just went down? Oh, yeah. He was basically just walking, right? And um, so before this injury happened, he was a late scratch from a game about a month before with an Achilles soreness um, on that same side. And also, uh, like a week before, Doc Rivers said he, he should have pulled him out of the game because he didn't think he was moving right. Um, now, just think about this in football terms. AJ, if you were questionable or doubtful on Tuesday and the game was on Sunday, uh, you know, you would probably work during the week and you probably wouldn't make a decision maybe until Friday or Saturday. Or Sunday. The fact that mm, – yeah. or even That's Sunday. Right. The fact that he was already ruled out mm. on Tuesday, mm. that was really worrisome. And, and, and as you mentioned, this didn't just come out of nowhere. He had been dealing with this leg issue for some period of time. Only he knows for how long. Um, and when they did that Achille- – when they, when they sat him down with the Achilles soreness, it was right before the yeah. game. The Achilles he was like weird. warming up. Yeah, he was warming up and it started to bother him. So – you know, you you just start to wonder about that sort of stuff. And also, Dame Lillard isn't 100% right. He missed a practice earlier this week with an adductor injury. Oh, no. Now, he was oh, supposed really? to come back Uh-oh. to practice today. And a couple years ago, Dame had uh, a sports hernia surgery. So he's had issues with sort of those abdominal uh, muscles in the past. And look, like at the end of the season, a lot of players have sore muscles. It's not like this is a huge cause for alarm. But they now need Dame. To be awesome, like especially just get their dead. their offense going Need these first few games if he's going to be out. And they're playing a team that went four and one on them in the regular season. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the classic mistakes that everybody makes, including those of us who cover the league every day, is to equate the regular season and the playoffs. Every year we get to the to this point in the year and we see the playoffs and we go, oh yeah, it's different. But that said, the Pacers had so much success against the Bucks this year including beating them in that big in-season tournament uh, semifinal right. in Vegas. You're damn right. That I think they'll come into the game oh, yeah. with, with you know, confidence. Sure. And you've got you know, Giannis out for who knows how long, and you've got Dane potentially limping. Like, I got, I got guys who I really trust telling me the Pacers are winning this series. I Ooh. say let's wait and see. Um, but uh, the Bucks have so much skin in the game here with what they did with the coach – what they did with the Lillard trade, uh, with where they're at, with how they've mortgaged all their draft picks going forward. Man, this is a, this is a tough moment for the Bucks. Caitlin Clark's playing for the Pacers, too, I heard. Yeah, yeah. Weekend. during I, yep. playoffs. She could. Yeah, it might be Dame time. She, but CC's she would get about buckets. to CC how it goes. She would get buckets in the NBA game, big time. I don't know. At the other end of the court, it might be difficult, but she would light some dudes up. What do you say? Yeah, of course she would. No. What do you say, She's Wendy? She's a dog, Wendy. Yeah, yeah, we understand that, <laughs> she of course. Uh, Tone has another question about a little bit of health, especially if you're a big guy. Yeah, you actually mentioned it when you were talking about Embiid in the, in the Olympics. Um, it didn't. Look, it doesn't look like it. It appears he's definitely not 100% coming off the injury that he sustained early in the year. Do we know his health going in, not only into the, into the series coming up, but like, is there a percentage that has he talked about where he's at as far as, as health and is he going to be able to make it through this next series? Yeah, that was one of the takeaways from last night yeah. was, I mean, regardless of how the knee felt, his endurance was, was, was tough. And that was a high-level game. You know, the stakes of that game about playing the Knicks or potentially playing the Celtics, no offense to the Knicks, but they're not the Celtics. Oh! You know, it's a, it's a big difference. And those teams played like it and it wore them out. 
Now, look, I think in general, other than the Celtics and the Nuggets, those two teams are clear favorites in my mind to win their series. The other six series, I don't think there's such thing as an upset. Okay. The, 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 how tightly packed it is in the West and the, and the intensity and some of the injuries in the East. And calling the Sixers a seven seed is ridiculous. They were 32-8 and eight this year when Embiid played. That ain't a seven seed, which is why some of the Knicks fans are kind of bummed that they worked so hard to get the two seed. Now they got to face this team. Aww. So when, when Embiid is there, they're tough, man. But Embiid has struggled to get through individual playoff series in his career. He has several times That's suffered so knee injuries. A couple of years ago, he got hit in the face and broke a bone in his face during the playoffs and he missed mm. playoff games. Oh. Just him staying on the court is so hard. Um, but here's the thing. The Knicks play the slowest tempo in the league. In fact, Jalen Brunson, here's a stat you want here every day. Jalen Brunson led the league this year in dribbles by like hundreds because the Knicks play really, really slow. They play old school basketball. He dribbles it up. And Embiid, that helps Embiid because Embiid can't be running up and down the floor. If Embiid was playing the Pacers, that would be hard. He's going to have to move against the Knicks. He can play a little slower. That should favor him. And if he stays healthy, they got a great chance. That was 50. There you go. Okay. That was 50 you need right another there. like 400, yeah. and you'd have an average night for yeah. Brunson. They can we'll track wait. a dribbles for, I mean. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a tedious yeah. clock. Yeah. yeah. Who's Somebody hates that, yeah. that job. Fun. Hopefully AI. Oh, my God. It's AI. It's AI. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, so we can't do it, though. They're taking our job. They're taking our job. They're taking our job. They're taking our job. Jazz! We don't know if they're right either. We're just assuming they're, yeah, they're right. So. Yeah, they're right. Yeah. Are they? Did you hear the AI uh, Kendrick Lamar this? It was tr- it was crap. Yeah, it was crap. And I it thought was, it, was it was him. A little different. Apples and oranges. What? Mm. Counting's a little easier than. Shout rapping. out all the pears too. Hey, Ricky dropped a new song. Yeah. Love it. I mean, things are really cooking right now. Can't wait to hear Champagne Poppy bounce back. Did you see what he did with uh, Channing Crowder's wife? Yeah. No. <laughs> Hmm. Dude's a Yeah, he is. Uh, Drake is an absolute. Anyway, so let's get back to basketball. Hanging out with Sauce. You guys are all over my head. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's all right. You got NBA stuff going right now. When you when the yeah. season's done and you don't care about the United States of America playing, uh-huh. then you'll be able to catch up with all the rap, be- uh, rap beefs going on. Uh, we do know that you've been plugged into the Braun camp literally since high school. We have the photo. We've seen this before. Yeah, yep. We know that you've been there <laughs> since the beginning of this entire thing over there in Ohio. Uh, there's a lot of chatter about Brawny entering the transfer yeah, portal. Top. That's him right here, yeah. That's that's you, right, what, Wendy, right here? Yeah, I, I really had big, big arms. I played defensive hmm. tackle for Ohio State. Well, where well, that, and black know, arms, too. Which yeah. Yeah. Nobody really yeah, understood. My, my old teammate. She well, listen, that's yeah. why you know, you can't see, yeah. Yeah, that's why yeah. he wears a suit. That's uh-huh. right. That's why he wears a suit, you know. Uh, does what, so we know you've been plugged in a long time into the LeBron James camp. One of the coaches potentially here, a friend here, is now head coach at Duquesne. Old coach was the coach at Duquesne. Bronny answers, enters the transfer portal. People are like, all right, is he going to the NBA? Is he going to G League? But then you got people in Pittsburgh that uh-huh. are like, he's coming to Duquesne. Yeah. Yeah. That is Come where on, he, Wendy, tell Do us. you have any inside information on what's going on with Bronny? And is the goal still for LeBron to play alongside Bronny on a team? Yeah, so that's a, LeBron kind of changed his, his the way he's talked about that during the season. He made it clear that that was – his dream it wasn't necessarily Bronny's mm-hmm. dream to play yeah. with him oh, um sorry and, dad and I just, shut up dad, I will play yeah. dad. And, and i know that Bronny has like put statements out on instagram i really would like you know he's never really done any in an interview and i'm not even saying he's got to do an interview but i would love for us to stop guessing and asking you know lebron about what Bronny wants i would love it if Bronny would just come out and say this is what i want whether it's in an interview or whether he just makes a video or whether he comes on your show no, and no, says, this is what I would like to My do. Game. And then there's clarity and there's no, there's no barriers. Here's what I'm going to say. When I talk to scouts about Bronny, they don't think that he was able to put his best foot forward this year because USC didn't play him in, the, in his position. They had several different uh-huh. guard prospects that were you know, NFL and, and, sorry, NBA draft prospects, and he played sort of on the wing. They say he should play point guard, which is where he played and excelled when he was in high school. And he obviously had that terrible health event that happened last summer. And he was expected to go right into playing Pac-12 basketball with no real buildup. So what the scouts are saying 
to Pac-Man. to me is that they've got to um, he he should go play someplace where he can show that he can be a point guard okay. and he can build up his skills and that may not be USC. Duquesne That's will let him pass the ball. Yep. He'll, he'll be Jalen Brunson yep. dribbling. Big. Yeah. He'll have the stats of Duquesne. I would love it. You're talking to somebody who went to the Duquesne games at the NCAA tournament to support Drew Joyce and Keith Dambra and the Dukes. Hell yeah, and I would love Girl nothing coach. more yeah. than to see uh, to see him play at Duquesne. I think it'd be great for him to play in the A10. My guess is he'll want to play closer to home, but. The NBA like scouts that I'm school. seeing, like like you see a lot of people who just put him down and say he's not an NBA player, or he's not ready. Okay, that's not that's not what the people that I talk to are saying. Why well, people it's I talk James to are Kidd. saying he didn't get to they didn't get to see him play his real position this year, so they want to see him do that. And maybe that happens in the G League, maybe that happens in summer league, maybe college basketball is in the best venue. Okay. But I think Lithuania he would really benefit from playing another year in college, especially since. He's one of the highest paid NIL guys in all college mm-hmm. sports. Yeah. Like just from a business standpoint. Um, and so I think all in talking to Rich Paul, who is his agent, I think all of those things are on the table and they're evaluating it. One of the big things with Bronny, he's gonna have to go through the NBA draft process. They're gonna want to see him, they're gonna want to put him through all the medicals and stuff like that. They're gonna want to put him through all the measurables at their combine in May. After that happens, which I'm which he's gotta go through. Then we'll have a better answer about what his short-term future might look like. Hey, Bronny, we're pulling for you, bud. Yep. We're big Good fans. luck, Bronny. Get him, Bronny. Not easy to be LeBron no, James' no. son, obviously. Oh, so any of that. And people are going to want to see him fail, obviously, because there's people that want to see LeBron James fail still at this stage of the entire thing. Bronny, we hope you go on and just absolutely dominate, pal. Build your own career. Do your own path. You deserve it. And we- do it at Duquesne, right? And yeah, do it at yeah. Duquesne. Boom. Bingo. Definitely. You should go take a tour around Duquesne. Maybe go down to Southside one night. Good that point. NIL deal will be able to serve you a <laughs> yeah. long way down there at about 50 cent drafts on every single night in Pittsburgh. We would appreciate it. Let's continue to talk about the future of the NBA because, hey, sad days. You know, I said rest in peace to the Pac-12. They're dead, Wendy. The Pac-12 is dead. The only place that wasn't able to get a TV deal somehow, whenever everybody was paying for live sports, somehow the Pac-12 wasn't able to accomplish that. It's a bummer. I am bummed out. It's not good for anybody. But with that being said, there's another entity dying, too, right in front of our eyes. Whoa. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Wendy, is the prevailing idea that the Warriors are going to blow everything up? I know, like, right after a lot of people said that, but then all the articles came out. Like, well, actually, maybe their championship window isn't closed. Maybe they run, run it back and bring all these guys back, even though they were the 10th seed and they got embarrassed by the Kings. Um, but then a lot of people are also saying, like, hey, Clay Thompson – He's going to make a shitload of money, whether that's in Miami or one of these other places that, you know, would be willing to pay him. Chris Paul came out recently and said, like, hey, I'm not done yet. I got I got a lot of basketball left. What are the Warriors going to do moving into the future? Well, I don't think they want to break up these three guys. Um, obviously, Steph and Draymond are under contract, and Clay is going to take a pay cut. You don't have a choice. He he's made forty three million this year. Sheesh. I think there's I think there's a number that he can come in at with the Warriors where they can pay him a good figure and that they can achieve cost savings. The big question is to me: Can the Warriors improve this roster without spending four hundred million? Because they spent three hundred eighty million dollars this year, when including the luxury taxes, and that's a big number. Now, by the way, they were a better team this year than they were last year. And you may say, no way, they, they didn't even make the playoffs this year. Last year, we made the second round. But I'm telling you, considering Draymond crushed them with that 20-game suspension across all those suspensions, they actually won more games the regular season this year. The West was just much better. And last year, they got a more favorable draw. This year, it was just harder. Um, the question is, are they going to still spend? Because their owner, Joe Lacob, came out on the record a couple of months ago and said, we want to get under the luxury tax. And to do that, they're probably going to have to cut Chris Paul. He's got a $31 million non-guaranteed contract for next year. They, let's say they get they cut Chris Paul, say thank you, go on elsewhere, $31 million off the books. Let's say they get Clay to take a $20 million pay cut. They say they bring him down to twenty three or $20 million. He still averaged 18 points this year, shot 39% from three, led the league in free throw shooting. Like He's still an excellent player. That's $50 million in savings right there with those two moves. They don't do anything else. They're out of the tax and things are better. But is their team better? Can they get better? So that's why the Chris Paul thing is a question. If they pick up Chris Paul's contract and then they take, they've got a few draft picks left, plus they have these young guys. They got four young guys who they play who are really interesting. 
Brandon Pajemski, Trace Jackson Davis, which you might have heard of there in Indiana, <laughs> Moses, <laughs> Moses <laughs> Moody, Jonathan Kuminga, who is one of the better young players in the Western Conference. Great name. And they're willing to package all that together. They could go star hunting and add to the roster. Maybe they could put Andrew Wiggins in that deal. But it's going to be really hard if they do what Joe Lakeup has said, and that's reduce the payroll. By the way, if they bring that team back to next year, this team went 27-12 and 12 down the stretch. Those young players get a little bit better. Draymond doesn't get suspended three different times. Maybe they're the four or five seed. Is there, does that mean they're a championship window? I don't know about that. They're not what they were six, seven years ago. But this is not a team that you're taking the TNT to and saying Bill blow it to a thousand pieces. Oh, TNT, not Turner. You're talking about TNT. Oi! 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 TNT. Oi! 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 That's what you're talking about. You're talking about fracking. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, come in sideways here. Yeah, sure. Steal somebody else's wall. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think that you go into you're something. Steal, you're stealing it? You go in through. I think I did a little bit more research on this entire thing. So yeah. I guess you go down. You. Mm-hmm. And then you're sideways. going sideways. Mm. That's the frack going into somebody to mm. get the potentially. I think that that happens in the fracking world every once in a while. It's a dirty game. It's a dirty it, game. It's a dirty game. You think you got it because it's below you? Uh uh-uh. uh. Neighbors coming in the side door. Mm-hmm. And they drink your milkshake. Remember, there will be blood. They drink your milkshake. Bingo. Yeah. Daniel Plainview. I don't know what that means. He basically Great. sold sold this guy all this land for a bunch of money, and then he was like, oh, guess what? I already drilled all the oil from this. I win. And then what? He drank a milkshake? Uh, he said, I already drank your milkshake. I drank it up. And then he takes a bowling pin and hits him in the head and kills him. <laughs> this is a movie? Yeah. Great movie. Be- Unbelievable it's, it's movie. A good, it's a feel-good three hours. <laughs> yeah. what, what movie? Three yeah. hours? It's called oh, There Will Be will Blood. blood yeah. yeah, you'll definitely watch it, Pat. Hey, Jay, do you have a question for Wendy? Is uh, I'm certainly putting it on the list. What's it it's called? There Daniel Will Day Be Lewis. Blood. Daniel Day-Lewis. Three hours? Yeah, Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Lincoln. What's up with these movies having to be this one, though, two they, movie lengths long? Quick three hours. It's the one. artiste. It's an American epic. I'm sick of it. Tighten that thing down. We don't need... There it is. Wow. Look at that. Wow. I can do three yeah. hours Good for that. producing. Holy Moses. That's Zito. Yeah, he's got quick fingers that's back a, there, Zito. That's an Emmy. Yeah, how do you think... Z? Well, no, thanks. Don... Yeah. Wendy, oh, wait, Wendy, don't Only even one get Emmy into here. that conversation. Yeah, our TikTok guy is an Emmy award winner. That is Enough. what we're what talking. Staff. You need. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we do got a good team. We do. Got, Bill Belichick joining our team actually what? next Thursday night should be a good time. Huge, huge man. Yeah, it, huge. Well, he's actually pretty average sized, I think, but it is a huge. <laughs> well, he is jock barrel chest, on that barrel chest. ring. Yeah. Hey, ask Belichick if Hawk should have won the Butkus Award. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he was paying attention. Definitely he was. was yeah. Our Ohio yeah. chief has the last question for you, actually, Wendy, and it might be about Wendy. the Butkus Award. I mean, we don't know. Uh, it's close. So, um, Doc Rivers. Everybody seems to have an opinion about this guy and why he got the job, when he got the job. What do you think of his? how he has done so far, and what do you think his future looks like in Milwaukee? Yeah, so here's the thing. The Bucks' early schedule was really, really easy. Mm. Their schedule was very favorable, and so they were, they were not playing really well, but um, they were winning. And so when you look at what happened to the team since Doc took over, the stats don't look good. But it's hard to, it's, it's, it's hard to like figure that out because – their second half schedule is so much tougher than their first half. They just had a really imbalanced schedule. That said, they haven't really improved, especially defensively. They've gone from 19th in the league in defense to 15th under Doc. But what Doc would say to you is that, okay, I had no training camp, no preseason, and I've had uh, Middleton, Lillard, and Giannis together for eight games since I took over. And all that is fair. Um, I think the idea of him being able to revolutionize this team at midseason – was kind of a ridiculous ask, and um, but the Bucks have so much pressure in this off season or in this up. Uh, Who's going to win it all, Wendy? Tell him, Wendy. Who's going to win it all? I mean, if the Celtics don't win the East, it's shocking. Uh, well, the pace we've already had shocked. two injuries. Injuries play a huge role. The Celtics don't win the East. It's shocking. And this is the thing about the Bucks: even if they get everybody together and play great. I don't think they're beating a full-power Boston team four out of seven. No way. And I don't think that's an insult. That's not an insult to Doc. That's not an insult to Giannis. That's a compliment to the Celtics. And beating Boston four out of seven, even for the – I'm sorry, beating uh, Denver four out of seven, even for the Celtics is a tall 
tall climb. Those are the two best teams. I'd be surprised if um, if those two teams aren't in the finals. But I would also say that one of the things about the NBA playoffs, you injuries never know. dictate so much. You injuries never, dictate so much. We'll you, see who's healthy. You literally never know. You never know. And and that's why we love it. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is why we love it. Yeah. We can't wait for the next four months of these NBA playoffs. Uh, and then right into the United States beating the hell out of everybody yeah. in the Olympics. Uh, Caitlin Clark, it just got reported. She's going to be making more than $20 million, uh with Nike, the shoe deal. And obviously she'll be making 78000 with the Indiana Fever. Yep. Even though we have purchased enough tickets to potentially supply that particular salary mm-hmm. uh, to her. She is, and I know you normally cover the NBA, her, Angel Reese, that entire South Carolina team, yeah. everything that's happening in women's basketball right now is awesome. Are you going to cover it more? Are you going to maybe try to help this thing out, Wendy? Uh, or? I'm, so I cover the Team USA women and men. I am hoping that she makes the Team USA women's team. She's a, she's a candidate for it over Who's in Paris. The team? I live in Omaha, Nebraska, okay? That is down the road from the University of Iowa. There are more Caitlin Clark jerseys in these streets than there are Steph Curry jerseys these days. You don't got to tell me how big of a, of, of, of a force she is. Whoa, I can't wait to see her play in the WNBA. And I also am really hoping she plays for Team USA in the Olympics. I would love to be able to cover her this summer alongside the men over in France. Well, just cover the W this yeah, season. Yeah, Come yeah. on. You're a basketball guy. Just switch over. Yeah. I'm, I'm going right from NBA playoffs to NBA draft, NBA free agency, right overseas with Team USA. I don't have a breath till mid-August, so All right. I'm hoping I can catch her in there. All right. Well, when football starts, we'll try to – you know, catch up with you to see how it all goes. And when the United States when football wins, starts, I'm nowhere to be found, man. I'm I'm shutting her down. Let's let's watch the Buckeyes. Where do you go? Forget just Omaha. That. You go. You just lock it down in Omaha. There, get some steaks. Yeah, man. Big Ten Whoa. Network, big time here. This is Big Ten country. Y'all have you know, and so. How we'll long have you lived Buckeyes. in Omaha? No, I, I don't think anybody would have been <laughs> able to pin down Wendy no. living in Omaha, Nebraska. How's that? That's my plan, buddy. That's my plan. I've lived here for eight years, and You're I love it. Team. And I'm on and I'm on the road 150 days a year. I thought you lived in Bronze House. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I was talking? Well, was- he's got several of them that nobody are in. I mean, it would it'd be <laughs> fine. He wouldn't even know I was there for weeks. You can go squat too. That's a whole other yeah. situation yeah. that's need- brewing in certain yeah. states and things like that. Um, we would like to offer you as a program and as a show, and it did just get confirmed. We would like to offer you a chance to watch an Ohio State Buckeye game with. AJ Hawk this uh-huh. upcoming season and AJ's a instantaneous yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. Boom. Right. yeah, we'll Figure make it, it happen. Out. Yeah. We'll Michigan. fly you out there. We'll yeah. uh, we'll nail down the details oh, later. I yeah. can't, not Michigan. I can't be. I have to be alone. What about you're with AJ Hawk? Yeah. Uh, I, gotta be, I gotta be alone too uh, for that. Yeah. I will put off that decision till we see how this season plays out. I'm hoping Michigan <laughs> will finally take a step back, but uh, let's we'll see on that one. Yeah. You Let's know, make sure we uh, we do this, though, because yes. there's a lot of these types of situations that, bro, this one's magic in the making, and uh, we appreciate the hell out of you. What's that? When they, when they play right. Nebraska against Rule and Dylan Rayola. Oh, my AJ will fly to you. Bingo. Do you know he's paying yeah, Chip Kelly's we'll salary this year? Five million. Who is? Wendy. He donated five million to get Chip Kelly to come BOC. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Wendy. You and AJ need to go hang out at Chip Kelly's office. We're trying to make that yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate Listen, man. you, man. My discussions with Chip Kelly are just uh, how to block on the offensive line. I ain't worried about what sort of motion is going. Let's let's block some dudes, okay? <laughs> block some dudes, especially against Michigan. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, yeah. Brian Windhorst. Thank you. Yeah, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for doing that, AJ. That's awesome, Good guy. That's um, awesome. Thank you, guys. Can't wait. We'll go to the Thunderdome. It's going to be so fun. No, no, Thunderdome. The Buckeyes don't play here. Yeah, what the hell? We need a waterproof. I mean, you got like a hundred TVs and you got everything set up. It's beautiful. Uh, nine Wendy's TVs a great are- golfer. We'll hit some balls at uh, halftime. He wants to good. see the game live, AJ, with, with you, you, brother. Oh, at you. the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Let's and, do it, And um, today is a very special day, and uh, it is something that we have been holding off for about an hour and 50 minutes as the Blackout Boys try to figure something out in the kitchen. Hey, it's okay. One candle's good. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up this hour on ESPN, yesterday he asked one of the greatest questions of all time to his hero, Bill Belichick. Today, 
It is Connor's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Connor. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Happy yeah. birthday, yeah. brother. Yeah. We appreciate you so much. Right. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Connor. Happy birthday to you. Do you make a wish? Yeah, of course. And what is it? Uh, Don't pit. tell us. Okay. It won't come true. Uh, happy birthday, bud. Appreciate it. We all love you. We appreciate the hell yeah, out of you. Love you guys, too. This show ends on ESPN. It continues on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. We can't thank you enough. We'll see you tomorrow for a feel-good Friday. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Cheers. Wow. Yep. Now nice. it's... Boom. Way to go, B.O.B. Got it in there. Way to go, boys. Good work, boys. Not lighting the candles again. Last time we did that, remember we had the hard... Uh, Kind of wax. shell, wax shell yeah, over the true. entire top Ooh, of the cake. Yeah. Uh, and they were also going to attempt to put in the, I, from looking at them through the window here, the putting it together, they were trying oh, to put good. 30 okay. or 28, 27. 29. 20. Would it, wouldn't have taken long to light those, would it? Well, it was my fault because, like, as we were wrapping up with Wendy there, I think you saw me go, hey, uh, let's get that cake ready in this mm-hmm. entire thing. Yeah. So the BOB only had. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. I also I was like, just spotted cow in here. What the, the hell? Uh, the fuck happened? Can we can we get us a visual on this? Don't hide, Bill. Bill, why you hide? Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill. Those turn, are sweet. Bill, turn. There. Uh, our, <laughs> What's wrong? Tell them I think they're sweet. That's it, been fashion. They're not sweet because there's a bunch of blood on the inside because he <laughs> murdered a cow last night <laughs> with his teeth. Yeah, his bare hands. He saw him go cow tipping, and he said, even better, I'm going to go cow kill it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made shorts out of him. Proud of you, Bill. Hey, baby, baby, boy, Bill. It's not your birthday, Bill. but you delivered us all a gift, and we're very thankful for that. We also have... Um, <laughs> get a gallon of milk when you buy those things. <laughs> Free you gallon get the of milk. Get the, actually, you get the shoes. They but look, get, he's, he's you... got the Panda. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, real. Then he's he's, ma- he's accessorizing his whole fit here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. He matches yeah. perfectly. Yeah. Because if you think about his bald white head mm-hmm. with the black hoodie, it's kind of like a, yeah. a cow print mm-hmm. from literally head to toe here. It does accentuate it quite a bit. Yeah, we're proud of you, Bill. Looking good, Bill. Happy, yeah. Bill. Happy birthday, Connor, though. Hey, thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Happy birthday, Connor. And thanks to the B.O.B.s birthday, mm-hmm. for getting that whole thing done in about a minute and a half or so. Mm-hmm. They didn't know we were up against clock because they don't really know that there is time. No, no, no. relative to them. No, and that's and that's why we love. Yeah, them. bingo, exactly. Uh, we've had EJ and Kara here. Uh, they won an auction to watch a show live for the oh. kicking the stigma yeah. auction with the Indianapolis in Colts. That's not that's not awkward for them, right there. So the thing about it is, AJ. This is for fucking charity. Yeah, okay. yeah. I can hear you, asshole. I'm saying it's a, and great thing. it's a great thing you're doing. I'm saying for them, that's got to be kind of an awkward. Hey, we know them. coming to you. Cameras they, paying to you. They won this thing. They won this thing last year. So, Remember? oh, good. Yeah. You know, if you They're know, awesome. what it makes it it's much less awkward for them. Remember, and, EJ, we put them down on a putting green mm-hmm. uh, last oh, yeah. year, and uh, there was a lot of putts. Got a lot of reps in. <laughs> yes, yep. he did. And uh, felt terrible immediately afterwards because we kind of put him on the spot. Good guy. Obviously, great group of people. We thought there was a new group coming in. We didn't know until, like, moments before they got in here that it was the same people as last year. We loved them last year. So I had this place locked. I had oh, all yeah. the doors shut. Yep. Because people get in here and they start snooping around. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that is uh, that is kind of the MO. People will come visit us and they'll bring their entire team with them. And then all of a sudden I see their team climbing up the steps over here yep. while I'm doing the show. I'm like, all right, do we have eyes on these on these things or not? EJ and Kara have been fantastic. Donated money to the Kicking the Stigma charity that the Colts have, obviously, uh, to kind of break the stigma of mental health and being okay to talk about it. So good people, good humans. We've appreciated you stopping by again. And we actually rolled out a little carpet for it. We did. Yes, we did. Put the carpet down. Put the carpet. Oh, See? Yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Big deal. Big deal. Got a couple Coke Zeros. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the best. Oh, man. I, I little did. table. You got a little nightstand or a little table. Yeah. Next yeah. yeah. Cool yeah. table. We told them we had it in a much much better version of what they're going to experience. And, uh, yeah, we're lucky. We were supposed to do live shows in here. You remember we were supposed to do that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been yeah. promising that for a couple of years. Yeah, that's probably a good move, just putting the pause on that, though. Yeah, that idea has evolved. Yeah, we just go two places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The issue is the logistics of getting everybody in and out. How many toilets have we got? Nightmare. Uh, not, not, not as much as the Clippers. And then what happens if we got three to four Ohio fucks here, and it's just an OHIO fest while or we're worse. doing the entire... Can't have it. Can't no. have that. And then what happens if, you know, the the fire alarm goes off again, and the cage rolls down, and then everyone's just stuck Pain. in here, and it's a madhouse. Yeah, you yeah. blow some sage every once in a while in a couple of these rooms, you get locked in. Yeah. Yes. They have this fire wall thing that goes down. And you, oh, you're serious? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost yeah. sliced Bill in half yeah. last time. Had to put them in. 
had to, for code, had to put these things in. And then it was just like kind of a part of the conversation during the building. Like, wow. yeah, I'm going to have to put these fire doors on just in case anything happens. They'll be right here at the entrance to here and this out here. It's like, okay, cool, cool. Never expect the fire alarm to go off. No. Then somebody starts blowing some sage into one of these things. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, meh, meh, meh. So it's like, <laughs> this door just shuts. I think it's to keep the fire Steel. isolated yeah. or whatever. Contain it, yeah. Yeah, and it's it comes mm -hmm. swift. Bill was is there some kind cow. of sensor? Yeah. Is yeah. there a sensor anywhere, you think, so it no. doesn't cut Bill's head off? Nope. No, it couldn't turn off because that wouldn't be illegal to <clears throat> break code. That's mm -hmm. right. That break code. Okay, good. Let's Fire see. department's right across the street. They've been here. A couple yeah. times. They're great. Yeah, they're very good people. Great dudes. We'll hit the button and lift the thing. Thank you. Yep. you know, we can't get out of the office. Thank you. We're stuck here. There's no fire, but also we are now trapped. Mm -hmm. So if you could help us out, that would be fantastic news. Next hour, we got Peter Schrager. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. What's Drake's this? mock draft is always pretty accurate, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It? Bingo. We got he knows. That is kind of the reason why anytime he puts one out, you have to look at it. Yeah. Because Shrake's, the way he'll describe this too when he gets on. I'm not like these guys that this is my living. I just do this for the conversations I have, the people I know from what I'm hearing. And inevitably, every year it ends up being like the closest. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, Daniel Jeremiah moved the sticks also. He won. Man. Very plugged in. He was number one. I think Shregs was number two. So it's like what he's hearing is worth a listen. And Bill Belichick said we're kind of getting to the time where people are starting to know. Now, we won't, they won't know until next week, probably officially. But the rumors of what's happening, Shreg's plugged in on. So we'll chat with him in the next hour. Uh, we'll probably do a giveaway of some sort. And then we'll wrap up this big unit Thursday yeah. in a beautiful fashion. We're incredibly lucky and thankful that you all allow us to do this for a living every single day. Let's take a break. There we go, Bruce. Bruce, you've been doing a good job back there. Oh boy, hey, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Oh boy, Bruce. Bruce's been filling in for Nick. Not easy. Yeah. No, no. None of that. I don't think anything any, anyone does back there is easy. No. But it's also like you got to be on. Yeah, yeah, locked in. Like, legit. There's yeah. so it'd many easy fucking to, buttons. It'd be easy to get lost, I think, and just start thinking about something and just, oh, wait, here we go. Drift off, yeah. yeah. And then all yeah. of a sudden, hey, what? Music, dickhead. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I'm about to piss my fucking <laughs> Remember the old one? I'm trying my best to tell you <laughs> we are trying to get to a break break. Yeah, he's doing great. Bruce, you've been killing it, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate a lot of tasks. It. Bruce has the most wide array of tasks. No doubt. In the, in the Thunderdome. And I'll tell you what, Bruce, you'll fuck them up every once in a while, but mm -hmm. much oh, yeah. more of a home run yep. than a strikeout for you. And we're very grateful for that. Yeah. Do you like just talking about that board? Like the, the old one was legitimately this big. Like with with that many buttons. This new the new one is the size of the toxic table, basically. Yeah, we got hustled into buying the most expensive of everything. By oh really? Yeah. By who? Everybody that does all of the stuff that they do are the biggest pieces of shit. <laughs> In what they do. Oh, yeah. That, that name is still on my list. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the same one that I talked to you about a long time ago when everything was getting built? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So that never, I thought it kind of resolved itself or no, helped we, out. Or yeah, something. we resolved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zito, Jake, uh -huh. MBJ coming in. Old Tim crawling underneath this mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Bill. Bill McComas burying things. Yeah. It's been great. Burying things. What's he burying? <laughs> Wires and stuff. What are you thinking? What are you talking he's, about? He's, I mean, burying bodies. bugs that get into the system. I think my favorite thing, and this is just not supposed to be on the show. This is not an entertaining part of the show. My favorite part of that entire this studio build, and if if I could recommend something less, I will try to find it. Do not build a studio, okay? <laughs> don't do it. For don't, all you out there, <laughs> don't ever think about it. Just don't do it. It is not a fun thing. There was a date in which they were supposed to be done. Do you remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was like, all right, this is the date. It's going to be done. There was two cameras plugged in. There was microphones sitting. One was on the ground, and then there was a desk over. A folding on, table. Uh, yeah, folding table on that side. Three chairs on here. Nothing on the wall. And you're like, we believe the studio is usable. We're good to go. We made the <laughs> made the deadline. We made the deadline or whatever, and it's like, you, so you're actually pieces of shit. That's what I am. Wow. Okay, I got it. Putting you're, this together. You're a piece of shit. Got it. <laughs> got it. Go. And then we realize over the next year go. that early indications in read, accurate one. A lot of bugs in this thing. Yeah. Everywhere. I mean, the first hour of the first show. Oh, my God. Is oh, man. Yeah. Remember? First oh, ever yeah. shot. First ever shot. First splash. And all you could hear was... <laughs> <laughs> And then obviously they come in, 
change a bunch of things and then t- say it's our fault. Of course, yeah, yeah. 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 We're you not guys, watching you. Yeah, switched all these wires around. What are you yeah. doing? Okay, we're watch- We yep. just watch what you do. Classic. Yeah, we. You're the experts. Yeah, so. that answer was uh, the. It was a, the rack wasn't grounded. Yeah, of course. You gotta ground it. Too much like Christian. I've learned a lot about off. it. I, I've learned a lot about it. Not as much as Z though, but like my dumb brain always asks like the. This has to be connected to this, right? Just if we're thinking out loud. And Zito has a nice mixture of like a phenom brain when it comes to these things, but also simple. We can put things together if we have to on the road. So like me and Zito talking to these people, I couldn't even fathom their brains as they're just trying to hustle the shit out of us. And they inevitably did, but us just in their face saying, you fucked us. Yeah, that was Mm -hmm. the last time. I know you fucked us. Yep. We know, just so you know, we know you fucked us. So you fucked us, but we know it. Mm-hmm. So whenever you write your little book about fucking people, know that we know that you mm-hmm. fucked We know. And we won't forget. Never. This or- goes in. We'll never forget. Okay. I'll we'll forgive. I might forgive, but I won't forget. Oh, no. No. Nope. Good. Okay. No grudge. Right. Okay. No grudge. Yeah, right. Remember, this is the new me. Uh-huh. Yeah, let it go. Oh, yeah. It's the new me. Here we go. Hey, hey, move it on. They're, that they're was okay. a big part okay. of joining ESPN, though. Like, these road shows were impossible without, like, the traveling studio, essentially. Yes. Because yeah. it was such a headache for Everybody. six years leading up to that. Yeah. Yeah, you guys having to load up truck. Right, we're going to need you guys to load everything in the office into a truck, drive down to Tampa. Yep. Yeah, plug Point it all up. in. Yep. <laughs> drive make sure it works. Room. Yeah, in the living room. Need an LED board? Yeah. Yep. I mean, fucking Mania last year. Or was two years ago, sorry, in Dallas. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We're in Bruce, the lo- uh, lounge. In the, in the lounge in that restaurant. Mm-hmm. Bruce and Zito drove it down. I drove it back. It was like... How many hours? How many hours? Uh, that, that one was only like nine. Tampa was the one that I think was like 18. Mm-hmm. Tampa was the tough one. Plus, the Dallas trip, Tahoe. Tampa was a U-Haul because we were going to be there for so long. We had to bring so much. How many fun. months were we there? At like four. Yeah. At least, I, I want to Where was say, the balcony? Remember when you fell asleep? Hot balcony. That was, that was yeah, Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. Bull game. It was Orlando. the NXT room. Really yeah, bad. it was in a house. In an Airbnb house. Just put a whole studio together. Yeah, I remember. Look at us now, boys. I want to say Tampa was March to August. Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. July. Those August. breakfast sandwiches yeah, were so good. Oh, 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 I just thought about those. I remember D-Buck got so high. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you had to yeah. string to him. Couldn't operate. That was awesome. Wait, what? Oh, I string to him? Huh. Yeah, so he wouldn't yeah, fall away. Cinder, cinder block down on the ground mm-hmm. around his ankle. Glued, glued his feet. Where was that? Where that was, was it? it? Tampa living room. Yep. Oh, nice. He walks in. Hey, what are we doing? What's going on? Good to see you guys. Got a hoodie on. It's 105 degrees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what's up? How you doing, D-Bot? There's some sage burning over here. If you want some. Oh, love that. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Start having some laughs. Have a good time. All right, we're live in 10 minutes. What? What's that? Hmm? Sits down. We didn't hear from him for four hours. Yeah. No. I got was in the <laughs> yep. yep. In the rafters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sage will get you. It yeah. will. Corbin. I forgot about Big Hands. Corbin came came for a show. It was he's, awesome. He's champion right now, isn't he? Yeah. And then Antonio Brown moved into the house. He did. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, you gotta hey, you gotta go there with this one. With with WNBA, you gotta go there. That's it. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Mark Caboli said he watched Randy Johnson interview on Pat McAfee's show and uh, thought it was Jesse the Body and Chur. The <laughs> Thank you, Caboli. Here's the video of our Tampa house. This is what the setup used to be. And uh, shout out to Zito and Tim for putting this entire thing together. There's no less than 45 wires across the floor underneath <laughs> all those rugs. That, yep. Yes. And we're just kind of plugged in. That was actually one of the nicer setups, though, too, that we. Yeah. That was, you know. So many things to drive and plug in and tear down and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but now we got thankful mm-hmm. ESPN people have to do it. A lot of people. They got a lot of people. Yeah, they yeah. do. We've seen these things come together from Azito and Tim McAfee, four hands to kind of piece this entire thing together. That's what the room was. Oh. Now, on the Airbnb photo, whenever we chose to rent this thing, thought this room was uh, a little bit different setup. Yeah, sure. they used the fisheye lens, of course. Yeah, and then we turned it into a full studio. ESPN... I appreciate them for doing this, but they got so many people mm-hmm. yeah. doing everything. Oh, yeah. And they're good people, you know, but it's like, it's a lot of humans. Mm-hmm. And we've built setups with four people. Four hands. Yeah. yeah. Look where we've come, boys. 
Pretty proud of us. Don't build Belichick soon next week. Yeah. Try to see where we go. Next week at the draft, we will not have a PA of our show out to the audience. So that's why we're not telling you where the hell we are. We're near the stage and the people, but it's like you won't be able to hear us if Wait, you're there. We're not going to be able to boo Raj when he comes up on stage? That is something to think about. Like, do we get a mega megaphone? A megaphone to send anything out there? Got Raj the next day on the show, so something to think about. Yeah. True. Go ahead, boo him, Tony. Yeah, go ahead, do it. That's yeah, our commission. Should be a fun night. All right, let's get to a break. Pete Schrager will be on the other side, breaking down his latest mock draft. He's been good about it, so let's make sure we're paying attention. Yep. I know Bill Belichick's going to be listening. Oh, yeah? Yep. <laughs> he is. He is going to be listening. I agree. I'm actually excited for this. Like, him having the Colts up there, that means he knows the Colts are looking to trade up. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice about change your life. Take five. 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 Hello, Mountaineerland. I'm Pat McAfee, your kicker and punter. Pat McAfee made a superb open field tackle near midfield. Pick up the Bulldogs' drive on a second and six. Nice fight. We have the wheels. The kicker! The kicker did it again! The second week in a row, Pat McAfee saves further damage. And look at that, Pat McAfee getting major props on the sideline. Iglesias turns the corner across midfield. McAfee in his way. And Iglesias is wrapped up by the kicker at the 33. Yeah, dude, that's, what am I supposed to do here? Fuck, dude. Like, what are we supposed to do? People should not tell me this stuff. They know they should. Can't do it. Our sources have told us that Mac Jones ain't going through. What? Oh my God. I mean, it seems like Trey Lance is going at three. Draft odds changed dramatically. Odds have just changed, by the way. Before you went on air, Mac Jones was minus 270, I believe, and Trey Lance was plus 280. Uh, and now Trey Lance is plus 105. Uh, <laughs> Hello and welcome to the second annual NFL Draft Spec. Yeah! Trey Lance, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, I beat you, dude. The odds one thousand dollars. Thanks for playing, AJ. Leo Jones is a Colt by the end of tonight. You can't control him, Dan. Dan's lying, Dan. Stop being a hater, Dan. I mean, obviously, it's great competition. You know, not just Pat, though. You know, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, you know, Clyde, you know, all these guys. There's always things that are taken out of context, but there's always things that maybe aren't. You never know. JJ, you're the best. Hey, Mad Mel, dude. Great to be back, AJ. Great to see you. Good to see you. you're still a sack of shit like you were last year. Don't L- you listen, have to listen, wear a listen, strap listen, Chris. Hey, I've never worn a jock strap, Mad but Mel. I've sniffed plenty of them, so I know what's going on with these <laughs> players, okay? I don't give a fuck. Who cares? I just want to eat. Zito, did we get that food <laughs> over here? With boots on the ground in Cleveland, Jason Glazer. Jason Glazer, your thoughts? Well, obviously, I do. This is gonna happen. The only person who probably didn't know the cop was gonna go here. No, you have in the studio. That's what live you go. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Didn't. No, no, you didn't. Didn't. No, you didn't. didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And then let me talk, let me talk, mm-hmm. let me talk. And then, no, 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 you didn't. Yeah, no, you didn't. Yeah. didn't. Yeah. What if this works? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I had this. I did. No, no, you didn't. I had this. I had it. Trust me. Can I talk for Christ's sake? Okay, fine, fine, yeah. There you go. Thank you. What? As we're live on the air, I look down at my phone and says, Hey, a dollar deal with SeatGeek just happened. SeatGeek is back. We have some breaking news that literally just got texted to my phone. And I think it's because nobody had a clue that 131,000 fucking people are potentially going to be watching this far into the thing. SeatGeek's back! Yeah, yeah. And if you use hashtag... Draft Spectacular and hashtag SeatGeek is back. They will pick a winner and will get you two season tickets to your favorite NFL team. Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. I cannot believe the Draft Spectacular was as big as it was. There's 100,000. What are you doing, people? Let's go. Yeah. There's people. We, go. we are so, so thankful. It fucking caused a firestorm with the amount of people that watched them. Articles written by these marketing nerds and their little community tech people saying, hey, this is the dawn of a new day. This is why SeatGeek survived. You watch the thing, you're like, man, this is pretty big. Probably get in on this. We appreciate that, dude. Oh, you're going to get articles written about your tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're off this.
to something big. Hey, we're about to something big, AJ. We are up to something. This is the coolest moment of the history of my existence. I think people are going to be startled. It's a joke, and I can't thank everybody enough, honestly. I'm up to something. <laughs> oh! It's a big time day. Let's go. Not only are we going back to Plum to do something cool, but today is the day that our heater horse has arrived for the Super It's a pretty big deal. You know, whenever you get a chance to give back to where you're from, especially a place that helped create me and mold me, I'm very, very lucky to do it. I'm lucky to be from here, and it seems like the only smart thing to do would be give back. Mm -hmm. What's up, Kenny Wood, dude? Kenny Wood is named after Kenny's Woods. A man named Kenny owned the hill in the woody area. They turned it into an amusement park, which is a Yinzer State. So Jeezy actually shots out this area. We need to I think life can be much simpler whenever you just take care of your people, enjoy mm -hmm. your life, and do your thing, yeah. and that's all we're trying to do. You know, growing old, slowly dying. How about you? How's everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give a full lead up to how I got to where I'm at. I think I'm very lucky to be from here. If you're a kid that has walked through these halls, you understand something that not a lot of people do. I think Plum is a much different place than everyone else. And there's Nick up there. Look at Nick, how pissed off he is. This past summer, I was driving through here because I was here for an event, and Angelo Bolino, little blonde haired kid, was kicking on the same field that I used to kick on as a child and he had like two balls and a holder. And I was watching him kick, and then he would go shag for himself, and then he would come back and kick. And the easy question is, if he had 10 balls, how much better could Angelo Bolino be? If I would have been able to have 10 balls, 15 balls, new cleats, new everything, chances to go to camps with my teammates and everything, what could have happened? So I said to myself, literally after meeting with Angelo, great season, by the way, dude. I said, if I ever get a chance, I'm gonna try to take care of the potential humans and kids that were in my exact position in club. I'm gonna give 200,000 to the Plum area soccer. I'm gonna give 150,000 to the PMFA youth football. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the baseball youth. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the lacrosse. And then we're gonna have two million in this fund that'll just start. And hopefully it'll only go on from there. Be the Sweet only. stuff for sports. Just anything to make everybody's, you know, the teams and the players' lives easier, better. Trying to streamline the entire process of taking care of the athletes of Plum High School is uh, kind of what it's all about. Thank you too. Wow, dude, that was cool. All right, Marathi, like the Indy. You're gonna have a lot of people that have never accomplished anything in their life tell you that what you're thinking about doing isn't possible. Just because they don't think they could accomplish it doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hey, we're all Mustangs here. Let's go. Just want to do what's right, but turned around and got dropped. Into the cover, he has sportsmanship, but Mia Hill just picked up her first win ever in NXT. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. And, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? Uh, so when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me, the half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you, when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> And that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you're pretty fucked up, yeah. When did, and, you, start uh, you, know, when did you start self cheersing? When did you start self cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Steve Bell. He was the one that actually started the self cheersing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Today's event is me versus a Carolina Reaper pepper. A pepper that has what? 2.2 million scovels uh, on average. I think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world. In comparison, a jalapeno is 6,000 scope. For every second after it is in my mouth, I don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comments section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be three minutes. This is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> that crunch. How are we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand, though, because I think I had a dry mouth. I had a little cotton mouth. Oh. Oh, okay. Once the hiccups start, <laughs> I, think I, I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? <laughs> do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, man, I think it's just starting to hit, like, the peak. <laughs> the curve on this thing is just starting to go up. <laughs> You are handling this much better than Bill did, though. You are, yeah. Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. Do you feel like you're gonna puke? Oh, God, that milk looks ice cold, too. Oh, hey, one more. One more. <laughs> Yep. Now we go. Now we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Dance with me. <laughs> How you feel now? A little bit better, but not quick. Oh god, that's a bad idea. This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome on this big unit Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Hour three of the program starts now. Sports. Not a lot of pizzazz. Yeah. No, Mailing it's it not in none. Not I did, I'm a little delayed. You know that I'm I'm always trying to time it up with the boys because I'm like a split second delayed. Yeah, well, especially with that tornado. That yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hope cool. everybody's safe as we transition into spring here. You know, you got some fronts battling against each other, yeah. some winds coming through, and that mm -hmm. means that every once in a while there's going to be a storm that is absolutely unpredictable and devastating. Everybody keep their eyes to the sky, and let's make sure nobody dies this tornado season. Well said. Okay. Now, granted, nobody has any control of that because no. it can drop out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And you literally, since I've moved to Indiana, I've told the story before, you're just looking up at the sky hoping that it doesn't choose to hit you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what a tornado life is like. But we're currently in there, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're currently in the middle of it. Let's stay safe. We hope everybody has a fantastic Thursday. The Toxic Table is here alongside AJ Hawk at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. Call man, not a bad shirt there. Yeah, yeah, not too shabby. I just kind of reached in uh, to the closet and just grabbed one. I heard you got a uh, maybe a new shirt today, did you? I did. I did get it. I actually got two new shirts. Uh, funny enough, talk grabbed me a, a Rottweiler one, which is nice. And, oh, dog. Uh, happy birthday. Currently, I mean, I feel like I could say this. Yeah, currently my favorite owner in the NFL, Kalen Ursay, also 
gifted me a uh, nice animal shirt as well. Wow. wow. Yeah. 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 Pretty sweet. Very Friend thankful for that. Friend of the program, yeah, Kaylin thank you. Ursay, wow. gifted you a brand new shirt mm-hmm. for your birthday. Wearing it tomorrow for sure. Okay. John Deere, remember? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Deere gal. She sent me yeah. uh, a message after the Brock Purdy John Deere thing and says, I think I missed my opportunity to partner with John Deere. It's like, no, 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 Kaylin. There's more tractors. She yeah. can get that job. There's a lot more Bingo. tractors out there. Hey, she could be CTO. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Chief tractor officer. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Travel around, farm to farm. Why not? Social media. You want a tractor. Get your hands mm-hmm. dirty. Yeah, I mean, you're on a team right now, but something to think about, maybe yeah. a CTO. Mix it up. How about how about knowing it's your birthday, sending in a brand new shirt? I mean, that's that's next that's level. Awesome. That that's the cold difference, you know? I'm wow. I'm genuinely pumped about that. Yeah, me too. Because was- that would mean like looking into thinking because mm-hmm. that's not just they're not printing that at the Colts facility. So ordering no. ahead, yep. yeah. doing the entire thing, that's very awesome. It was so nice, it pissed me off. That's good business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very good it business there. What, what By the Indianapolis is. Colts, as opposed to making a documentary trying to bury the coach that gave us you know, six Super Bowls. Exactly. Over here, they're like, who's that guy that's a Patriots fan? Oh, it's his birthday. Oh, I'd like to get him something. I would like to get him something very kind. Especially in the Loud House, yeah, first, this upcoming season, first class, yeah, well, but first class organization. I mean, I, I, I still, like I said, yeah, it was, it, it flustered me a little when I got it and learned it was. Yeah, from you her. did. You pouted and walked. I off. told you. It was I so nice. It pissed you me can't off. See what's actually going on here? One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys, Town <laughs> Diggs, cooking up a conspiracy, seemingly. Well, I don't know. A billionaire with uh, unlimited funds potentially uh, hears someone talking shit on their organization constantly and says, "Hey, let's do some research into this." This guy, okay, and now knows everything about him, knows what he wears, knows when his birthday is, knows where he lives, knows what he eats, where sleeps, he drinks, uh, yeah, everything. So uh, maybe just keep your eye uh, on your head on This is good business. This ain't what you're saying. Tony's right. I got to wash this shirt immediately. <laughs> you're right. Do you think that you're getting like some sort of uh, uh, poison on her? Yeah. yeah, who knows? I saw a video Ooh. this weekend of, uh, of Jim Kong and Putin mm-hmm. cheersing yep. and then just holding really? their drinks and yeah, staring too, at each other. Too yeah. To- I don't think it was from recently. Who knows when it was? And it literally, it does matter when it was, I guess, especially with everything going on right now. I didn't do enough research, but they cheers and then they just both stood there with their drinks. Smart. No way am I doing this. No now. chance. It's like, oh, so both of you have definitely done this. Yeah. Because that's why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. Colts would never do something like that, try to give you any type of rash because of a shirt. What they wanted to let you know is they appreciate the fact that you exist, pal. Happy birthday to you. We're all very lucky for that. And shout out to the Colts being a first-class organization. And shout out to their PR telling us exactly what's going to happen at the draft. Yeah, yeah, that was was cool. Yeah, draft uh, Pison is here. Matt Conti obviously (laughs) came in, and he looks like a young lad. (laughs) He's got a little Hayden there. Hayden's a mini Conti. Gotcha, fucker. Yeah, and... uh, he taught us exactly how it's going to go mm-hmm. at the draft next nice. week. So thank you for being the leak of the Colts organization. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Matt you, Conti. Conti. Bill already ordered Any, the and Anything that gets out from the Colts is coming from that guy. Go yep. Joe yep. one more time. That's the guy yep. right there on PR the left. Guy. Man, handsome guy. He's yeah. super handsome. Yeah, is that he's, FanDuel open on his phone right there? Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah you're, t- you're right. <laughs> is that what is that this guy was? betting on games Hold right on. now? Is that ESPN bet, Conti? Go back oh. to that. Jeez, like, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Conti's actually one of the best humans of all time. He's a great guy. Like, one of the greatest humans of all <laughs> yeah, time. the man. Yeah. Works so hard all the time. Doesn't say shit yep. ever. We were just literally cornered him right over here. Mm-hmm. What are the Colts doing, Conti? Huh? What are you preparing to say? What do you, you got? He goes, I don't know. I'm listening to the mocks just like you guys are. Okay, Conti. Sure. Do you want a water? Oh, love a water. You don't get one until you tell us what's going on. Oh, well, all right, I'm all not right. thirsty. Yes, yeah. This guy's unbelievable. <laughs> Great father, too, because his, his children do acknowledge. The tribal chief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which cool. we can appreciate. Absolutely. Conti's the man, so is Hayden. The Colts have been nothing but fantastic to us. Shout out to EJ and Kara, who won the auction to come watch the live show. What a terrible thing to win, but we're happy. I know. I know. Happy as though. Happy for them. <laughs> yeah. yep. If they're happy, we're happy for them. Joining us now is a man who I guess is swaying the Colts PR on the thoughts of what takes place next week at the NFL draft. Over the last few years, he has been one of the top mock drafters in the entire sports media world. Why? Because this isn't his full-time job. He's just putting things together from what he's hearing from his friends, and normally he's pretty damn accurate. He's an Emmy Award winner. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from NFL Network's Good Morning Football and Fox Sports' kickoff show, Beer Shrinks. Yay! Shrinks! How you doing, Shrinks? Woo! I'm great. Huge Matt Conti fan myself. Awesome dude. Tell Matt hello. Love him. And he's uh, never told me crap either. So Okay, so, so Conti, would you like to 
Would Jake say hello back? Hey, 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 Pete. Yeah. hey, Peter. Hey, Pete. That's right. yeah, I don't know if you saw it. We'll translate. You have anything else to say, Conti? Like, how's your family or anything? Or just, just a nice little hello? Just hello. Just hello. Just hello. Just right. He doesn't care about Go your family. Coach. Yeah. He's yeah. focused on draft yeah. right now. Shrakes, just like you are. We got another mock from the Shrakes. Every time this happens, we get jocked up. Mm -hmm. Now, even more so for Colts fans, because making moves for Malik Neighbors. Now, mm -hmm. I think there's a chance that Jim Irsay says, like he told Chap, who's one of the local writers here, uh, I would like to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, to do that, you would have to make a massive jump. How did you get to these picks here for these teams, and how close do you think this is to being finalized before next Thursday, Shrinks? Yeah, so my process, Pat, is I put one out the week before the draft and then the day of the draft. And usually when I put my mock out, people know that it's coming from pretty reliable sources, or at least their guesses that make sense, and I've spoken to people. The amount of feedback I've gotten since this list went out has helped form my next mock draft. But I'll tell you right now, as we speak doing this show, Adam Peters is doing a press conference in Washington. He's the GM. Kevin O'Connell and the boys are down in Baton Rouge meeting with Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels' agent put out a tweet with a scratching chin emoji about the fact that all those different quarterbacks were at once in Washington. So Things are and we'd like to say, shut up to that agent. Mm -hmm. I think I think we all would like to say, shut up, dude. Okay. There it is. There it is. Just one of these. Um, look, where there's, where there's smoke, there's something. And I find it fascinating that I did this mock draft. I had J.J. McCarthy going fourth overall with the Giants trading up. And I live in New York, so all the Giants fans freak out. They either want them, they don't want them, whatever. What was interesting was... I've had three or four different teams reach out to me in the last 48 hours being like, are you just carrying water for the Cardinals? I'm like, I have no connection to the Cardinals. Like, I, I know Jonathan Gannon and Monty, but like, my guy was Kingsbury. He's been blown out of there. My guy was Kime. He's been blown out of there. Like, I don't have a connection to those guys. I'm not carrying water for anybody. I'll tell you this. The Giants have done extensive, extensive work on these quarterbacks. And I know that the night before Easter, they took out J.J. McCarthy in Ann Arbor, took him to Ruth Chris. They had a wonderful meal. They've met with him again since. Giants are looking at the quarterback. So I said, let's roll the dice. Let's put the Giants moving up two spots. And the response has been crazy on my phone from other teams wondering, like, how real is that? Mm. And then you've got these three teams at 11, 12, and 13, Pat, mm -hmm. that are <laughs> Vikings need a quarterback. What? 12 Broncos need a quarterback. 13 what? Raiders need a quarterback who are getting a little interested also saying, well, wait a second. If the Giants are going, that's the four top quarterbacks gone and the top four picks. Well, well, well what, what do you know? So it, I like to put it out there and then use the feedback. And then the day of the draft, I'll have probably a more updated one. But I feel pretty confident with a lot of the stuff I have in there. Nice. Put, the uh, put a couple lines out in the water. You know, you never know what you're going to exactly get back, right. get a little bit more information. I like what you do with the Colts there. You think the Colts maybe move up even more to get Marvin Harrison Jr.? Or do you think maybe quarterback, 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 Marvin Harrison drops down a little bit more? That would be uh, – I mean, if the, if the Cardinals sit pretty at four, Harrison, I'm told, is the pick. But they could move out. Now, the Colts are interesting. The – off season and Matt Conti's in the house right now. You guys know a lot of players resigned, players they like, players they feel confident with. We love seeing Kenny Moore and Pittman and all these guys. But the Jaguars went balls to the wall on free agency. The Titans went absolutely bonkers in free agency, and the Texans went bonkers. You know, Chris Bout. Do you think they're sitting on their hands and they're just going to sit at fifteen and take a defensive back and say, "Okay, we're going to"? I think there's a chance the Colts make a couple calls here and move up, especially if neighbors or Dunze or Harrison falls out of that top five or six. Uh, I, I love Pittman and Pierce. Imagine having neighbors Pittman and Pierce, and it, you could probably move up a few spots. The Bears, I look at them at number nine. I know Ryan Poles real well, and they love Caleb Williams, but at that nine spot, the Bears only have four draft picks in this draft right now, and they don't have a second round pick. That nine spot could be really enticing if Neighbors or Adunze falls down there to nine. Teams might be looking to trade up. I just, it's a mock draft. I'm just putting it out there, uh, planting some seeds, but I think the Colts would be. Would be a team worth watching. I I love to hear that. I'm pumped to hear that. I've not done any of my own research because once again, I don't want to put any of my friends in any compromising positions, and I'm not an insider, so I'm staying out of the whole game. But boy, oh boy, it feels like a Jim Irsay move to bring Marvin mm. Harrison Jr. home. Mm -hmm. It does. And at the end of the day, your scouts can do all the work that you want to do. Chris Ballard can do all the work that you want to do. You can have all the vision that you want for how your team is going to go, how the offseason is going to go. And then all you need is one billionaire to walk in there and be like, hey, this is cool, right? Yeah, it yeah. is.
<laughs> that is what we're doing, which is why the draft is so incredible. That is legitimately yeah. why the draft is so damn incredible because who actually knows what's going to Remember, Mac Jones was three. Mm -hmm. Bro, what was that? Three years ago. Yeah. Three years yeah. ago. Yeah. Mac Jones was three, yeah. three, 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 three for literally every single day for three months leading up to the draft. Then day of, he ain't three. And then all of a sudden, chaos happens everywhere. That's why you being as accurate as you have been over the years is an impressive thing. AJ has a question for you, Shregs. Drake, up, I, know in your, I know in this mock you have Drake May going to uh, the, the Patriots at three. I know Elliot Wolf of the yeah. Patriots has come out and kind of said, hey, we're open for business. What exactly do you think he means by that? And do you believe that they will stay locked in here at number three? From what I've heard, the Patriots are very, very into both May and Daniels. So whatever Washington does at two or if a team trades up for two, I think the Patriots quarterback at three. Now, look, Elliot Wolf, if you know his, he's Ron Wolf's his dad, one of the most legendary executives in NFL history. He's been around Packers, Browns. Now he's got this Patriots gig. It's a big shoes to fill, obviously, with who he's replacing and making those decisions. Mac. But I, I would think this is a, uh, a, a, a quarterback position. You're, you're not looking to be top five again. This is one of the rare drafts where there's three guys that everyone says is a number one quarterback and maybe four with McCarthy that you could feel comfortable with. I would be very surprised if they got cute. They, I know they have a lot of holes to fill, but don't get cute. Take the quarterback here. So, speaking of the press conference, Peter's talking for the Washington Commanders. There was a quote that just came out, we're comfortable with two. We yeah. are. <laughs> we are very comfortable with two. We are going to stay here. We assume that means Daniels, as you do. Peter's on the possibility of trading the number two pick. We feel great about staying at number two. I don't see a lot of scenarios trading down. That's basically them letting stop calling. Yep. Okay? We don't need any but phones ringing at all from now until draft. Look, the Daniels thing, to me, I thought that was a done deal a couple of days ago. But since I put the mock out and since the stuff with the agent and, you know, you had the top golf meeting, which I think on paper. I don't. Hey, Shrek, pretty... once again, earlier I told that guy to shut up. It's just because, like, you're not the story, dude. You're an agent. No, you totally, should not be totally. any part of this thing. Totally. Like, oh, does he have baggage coming along with him? His family's great. School's great. Teammates love him. He does have this agent, though. It's like <sighs> that should never, no, ever nope. be in the conversation, which is why Ron's probably a good guy. Agent Butler, probably a good guy. I just think this is stupid. Just get your name mm -hmm. the hell out of there and lock him into a deal that's already been negotiated by the NFLPA. You're not even needed right now, actually, because of the slotting of contracts unless Facts. you're bringing in advertising deals. So there's no reason for you to even get brought up on this show or any other show. That is my unless opinion. Unless you're trying to pull Bosa. Some sort of power play and say, okay, well, we're not going to watch, which I haven't gotten any information they are, but I will say this. Oh, okay. One of the one things we've heard, one of the one things we've heard since, since way back at the combine was that they're sitting at 13, but Antonio Pierce and Jaden Daniels have an incredible relationship and Jaden Daniels looks to Antonio Pierce as a mentor and they have a shared friendship and relationship from the Arizona state days. I just think 13 to two Unless you're offering five first round picks and Max Crosby and pick anyone else on our roster to get up to two, I just think it might be too much of a leap. And as much as, you know, Jaden might want that or Antonio Pierce might want that, it, it to go from 13 to two is a massive leap. Remember, the 49ers moving up to three. They had to give up three first round picks to do it. So what's 13 to two? I, I just think it's too much. But that's the one rumor I've heard. And that thing is kind of quieted over the last couple of months. OK, yeah. so that's maybe Ron's working then. Yep. Maybe I. Yeah. Hey, OK, I apologize. Do what you need to do for your client. <laughs> With that being said, let's not be adding any more bullshit to the client's life unless you're making the big power play mm -hmm. like we have seen some people do in the past. I what did you make? What did you make of the top golf thing? So just for the viewers, obviously the context is they had instead of just one on one, we're going to bring you all separate. Washington brings in four quarterbacks, not Caleb, but Penix, May, McCarthy, and Daniels. And this is all real from Breer. But what I loved is like they were mixing it up a bunch, and it's really the four of them um, with a lot of different people from the Washington Commanders front office and coaching staff interacting with them also. Pat, I've never worked in an NFL front office. What do you make of that? Do you, does he think that matters at all? Or you think so, that's cool? What do you think? So I've never been invited to one of these. AJ's been invited to a bunch of these. So obviously, as we learn about the 30 visits, uh, top 30 visits, and we hear GMs talk about the importance of them, especially with the choreography of the combine and pro days now are choreographed seemingly, and the meetings are choreographed. They think that those top 30 visits, you can kind of get them one-on-one -on -one away from their people, put them in situations where you can really try them. So I think a lot of GMs have said that those are very, very vital to the 
entire judgment process here during draft season. But then Bill Belichick came on yesterday and said, we've had 12 guys in before at the same time. It kind of helps out our staff to be able to work at one time as opposed to 30 different separate ones. So I, I assume there's something that they think they could get from it. I assume that watching them interact with people in the public whenever they're at Top Golf, their competitive drive, how they handle conversations with the boys and everything like that, you could gain an advantage from. But I'd never heard of it before yesterday, so I, I certainly yeah. was confused by it. And the top 30 thing, everyone's different on it. Like, I'm pretty sure, and I'll talk to McVay. I don't think the Rams under McVay have ever done, and I know they haven't had many first round picks, but I don't think they've ever done a top 30 visit, and they haven't done any this year. Like, they don't do it. Some teams really value it other teams are just like what's no we're going to speak to him on zoom we're going to get a chance to go to their pro day we've got all the film like so the 30 visit and the significance of it and even i reported on monday that brock bowers is visiting the jets and it was like you know the new york post is the biggest story in new york because it's wow it, i don't know if it's as important as we make it out to be but it is no worth noting that different teams value them differently so Adam Peters actually just talked about this in his press conference via John Kime here. What's cool is we get to see them all together in a group setting. You know, of course, that's top golf, 20 <laughs> people in at the same time. They all got a lot of time individually with coaches and with us. They were staggered coming into it was a great blend of that and working everyone together in a fun environment. Now, quite an advantage to be in there earlier. Yes. You mm. know, as it rolls on because you're more comfortable as the yeah. days go. And hey, welcome. Well, we have a good well, yesterday we we're at the building. You're going to the building today. This is what they're going to do. Like, what a time. Yeah. Okay, so this is how they're using new ownership, right? Yep. Yep. True. Yeah. True. Front office, new era. We'll see if hey, it works Bob out. Bob Myers, right. like, that's an NBA guy coming in, had, had a real role in who hired who at the GM and the coach. And, like, this is a small one, but there's a guy, Dave Gardy, who was, like, very right. high up, an SVP at the NFL League office. Schefter breaks news on Monday. It got, like, 10 retweets, but I thought it was maybe the biggest news of the week. The commanders hired Dave Gardy, who basically – has been working in the NFL for 20 years and kind of built some of the salary cap and waiver wire system, mm, but also damn. now the last couple of years was dealing stuff with the rules and with Troy Vincent and on the officiating side and the commanders hired Dave Gardy in some nebulous role. And it's like, that's a different way of thinking that they are thinking outside the box a little bit. And I'm kind of curious to see what the commanders do the next few years, because I don't think they're playing by the typical rules and the paint by numbers that the NFL teams have typically done. Yeah. And you got to major in the nebulous. That's what people say. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you don't major in the nebulous then you're going to get out executed <laughs> every single time. Connor's got a question for you, Shrag. Yeah. Shrag, yes, there sir. is a comment from Brandon Bean. It was either today or yesterday about how, you know, they're at 28, but they don't have, you know, 28 first round grades for, you know, the 28 players that could lead up to them. With that in mind, how many people do you think, or players rather, have those first round grades? And at what point in the first round do you think we might see teams, you know, trading out and, you know, other teams maybe trading back in perhaps, you know, the pay? I know in your mock draft you had Lad McConkey going 31 to the Niners, but white slot receiver has got New England written all over him. Is there a chance? <laughs> well, that's know, old New England. They might trade. True, yeah. that is old New England, but hopefully they keep some of that, you know, flair in, in these new seat in these new <laughs> teams pizzazz. too. The pizzazz, yes. It's it, not to get too wonky. It's a really cool draft in that it's great with the quarterbacks up top. It's great with the wide receivers up top, and it's really deep at offensive tackle. So it's a big offensive draft. Mm -hmm. There are probably two really elite pass rushers you'll see in the top fifteen. It's Latu out of UCLA, and of and it's uh, Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Corners, you might see one in the top 15, Terry and Arnold or Quinion Mitchell. And then that's about it as far as like your blue chip guys. And you might get Byron oh, Murphy, oh. the defensive tackle out of Texas. And then there's this big group of like really solid end of first offensive linemen, end of first wide receivers and end of first like defensive backs. So I think I think Brandon's spot on with it. And he also said like. We, we don't necessarily need to have a number one wide receiver. We need a smart wide receiver who runs right. We're not going to replace Stephon Diggs with the 28th overall pick, which leads me to think you know, he's comfortable with, with, with whatever is there at 28 or moving back or taking a guy in the second round where there's, there's not this great urgency for Buffalo to, to trade all their chips to move up because they do have, obviously, a guy they like in Kincaid last year and the other wide receivers that are still there. Brandon Bean told us whenever we were down to annual meetings, he said he's drafted wide receiver in every single draft, yeah, yep, every, every single round. round. Every, every, seven. every single round. Yeah, You'll be covering one. every round pretty much on NFL Network. Can't wait to spend the entire weekend next weekend with you, pal. Really excited. I'm excited, dude. How about Belichick on your show? Are you serious, bro? <laughs> That's pretty good. 
Yeah. I pretty, mean, that's come on, dude. I will, be, I will be a part of the draft coverage for NFL Network, but I would be lying if I'm not going to be watching you and Bill Belichick breaking down picks. I'm sorry to all my NFL Network bosses. That sounds pretty damn cool. <laughs> no, yeah, wait, it's okay. Got a phone, right? Phone, yeah. and uh-huh. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Lot, lot of both. Of you both. can yeah. steal what Belichick's yeah. saying. For the weekend. Boom. Yep. Yeah. 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 You can gather thoughts from Bill. They're your own. Send them out. Yep. You know what I mean? You've heard this before. Listen to Bill. Say exactly what he says. Oh, I'm you smart. should see the amount of that we're going to do. Yeah. I cannot wait. <laughs> yes. to look just, at that visual. Just look at him next to you. That's, dude, pinch me. That's unbelievable. Well, legit. Are you in New York still right now? Let's get to it. I am. Yep. I am. Yep. Yeah. Where are you yeah, from? I'm in New York. Where are you from? Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from I'm from Jersey. My whole life I've been in New York and New Jersey. Yeah. Atlanta a little bit. Yeah. Well, you went Love to that it. super good Emory, school. Yeah, of course, yeah. super good school yeah. down there in Atlanta. I mean, yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that right. was the face I was yep. going to make. Yes, that is it. Uh, I have heard, you know, um, you're moving to Los Angeles? Is that how, is Shrake's going to be an L.A. guy? Let's go. You're Good LA? morning. Football is going to be in Los Angeles no matter what. I would like to think I'll have a, a role in it. We'll see if I'm moving the family and whatnot, but uh, I... Mm. I, oh. I Shrake. The show is. We don't need to hear that, that Shrake. Mean? L.A. Pete, we need it. We need. We need L.A. Shrake. Do you? Bash. L.A. Shrake. That glow on Shrake's your skin. Shrake's in L.A. The whole yeah. team. Yeah. Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, your shirt. Hawaiian we'll shirts. Yeah, I was thinking opposite. I was thinking me at like Delilah or Nice Guy hanging out with like Drake and Twenty One Savage and. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, well, you just well, picked your side. Yeah. The, uh, don't say Diddy. Don't say Diddy. <laughs> no, 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 Diddy. <laughs> yeah, did you ever? Yeah, yeah. Did you ever cross paths with that guy? Strange. You ever got any Diddy parties? No, you know it's funny. I, I like I never obviously no, um, but <laughs> like I first grew up first. in New York and New Jersey, and like the white party always sounded like the coolest thing in the Hamptons, and it was places that like I would never. I'm pretty happy not having been invited to any. Hey, way to go, Shrek. Way to go, Shrek. Shrek's his city guy though. Yeah, He's the king exactly. of New York. Yeah, legit Bro, city yeah. guy. Oh, like look at that. Shrek. knows. We got a photo of you on the beach with uh, Tobe, I believe. Yeah. Hey, that's my guy. Yeah, with Tobe's special teams that coordinator photo? for Kansas City. Yeah, look at that photo. Trunks. Look how good you look, Shrek. That's hands. Those are great. Special teams, bro. I am a special teams maven. That is Dave Tobe, one of the greatest to ever do it. Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champion. Special yeah. teams coach, right? They lost uh, Tommy Townsend. Yeah, I know. Good. He just signed down with Houston. That is a sneaky, massive, mm-hmm. massive ordeal. And they Tommy signed. was Awesome. And I thought when they requ- replaced Colquitt, that was a big deal. Then Tommy was like, as good, if not better. I'm like, all right, uh, now they're rolling the dice again. Dustin, I, I know you probably heard that. He was a lefty. You guys played different balls. Right. You guys were right. very different punters. Mm-hmm. Obviously, tough to judge. Colquitt was there for like 27 years. The um, man. Then they signed Punk God. Yeah, Punk yeah. God now. Ariza back in Kansas City. I mean, it, it, pumped. It, it pumped Cam for Johnson that. Comes I'm, excited to see, I'm excited to see where he puts the football yeah. section. And, and what Andy Reid does with them. Well, and Tobe. Yeah, guy is he's got a, a tough act to follow down there. For years, Tobe would get that head coaching buzz, like he's the next Harbaugh special teams coach, and then it kind of died. I think he's satisfied doing special teams, but I love that we could even talk about Dave Tobe on the show. Well, it's because you were uh, shoeless with him at some <laughs> yep. beach. He had My those, boy. He had those sweet uh, sandals. Uh, like the Merrills? Yeah, can't be seen in those ever. Yeah. But if you're Tobe, yeah, you yeah. kind of do your your thing. Let's get back to the draft, Shrag. Uh Ty is... I thought we were going to talk about Bubba Ventrone a little bit. No, okay, let's go back to the draft. Love Bubba Ventrone. Yeah. What a stud. Oh, Bring him home. Exactly. I don't know why he's not oh the God. special team. Where's he at? He's, he's, in he's in Cleveland still, right? He's in Cleveland. He's in Cleveland. Yeah, longtime Colts guy, obviously. Yeah, we won a lot of games because of our special teams, and then he just leaves town. It's like, yeah. okay, and then we're fair catching kickoffs. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Big Bubba's doing that? Yeah, no way. <laughs> no, no. You can have a lot of different insiders on the show and reporters, and I respect them all. No one's talking special teams yeah. coordinators like I am. Let's go. Oh, Shrinks. Well, Bill Amen. Belichick probably, but yeah. I understand what oh. you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand <laughs> what you're saying in there. Let's get back to the draft. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Shrinks, you were just mentioning Blue chip guys, uh, how there's only about 15 of them. You missed Cooper DeGene. Make no mistake about it. He is a blue chip guy. I don't care, you know, what you're hearing. He is, and he'll (laughs) show on Sundays that he is. But uh, he has been one of those guys who early on, before he got hurt, you know, people were talking, hey, this guy could be a top 10, top 15 pick. Then he gets hurt, breaks his fibula, and after his workout, he's kind of re-ascending up draft boards. I think you have him going 22 to Philly. What do you think his ceiling is on draft night yeah i think he's he's in that 20 to 32 range if not early second round pick look he is electric he's coming off a serious injury in november so (laughs) try to recover from that we'll see but his pro day was great he he did everything he had to do and he does another thing he plays special teams he returns kicks and turns punts and can do that so uh i have him as my third cornerback not safety cornerback 
Um, so well, I have it going. Your, yeah, Arnold. We know. Amen. Yeah. He plays corner. Corner. Strengths. Yeah. Cornerback. Okay. Respect to Jason Seahorn and Scott Case yeah. and the many before them. Um, but it goes, many when? I mean, yeah, the yeah. many before yeah. them certainly. Mm -hmm. In the 50s. There needs to be some. 50s, yeah. There needs to be some chatter about when that old. An old, Char an old Charlie Chaplin film. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Silent film. Yeah. yeah, we we agree. Cooper's second rounder. That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah, there's yeah. no way he's no, they, uh, last until the second round. I hope he's still because I, I if the Packers if he's still there and the Packers get twenty five, you like that? I'll I'll jump off where we're at at the draft. Okay. So he won't uh, he won't return punts if he's playing corner. I don't think personally. Now there have been a lot of corners in the past who have gone on to return punts, but like when you're on the field to do both for a drive, and then even kickoffs is even harder because they just scored seemingly. Mm -hmm. So you were on the field for the entire thing. Now you get a commercial break, two and a half minutes. Now it's like, yeah, here we go. You got to go. But if he does do that, and they also have him at nickel, right, mm -hmm. or something else, be okay, that would be worth a first rounder. Yeah, especially if he, yeah. he you know what I mean. Definitely, like people have yeah. drafted look, that in the first round. That, that team has taken defensive backs in the past. Obviously, Jair Alexander, and I don't know what's Quinton Rollins. Was he second round, first round? They've done that, Stokes, a lot, that late recently. Stokes out of Georgia. Savage. Yep. So they've done it. Like they've they've no problem taking that position. Uh what's cool about Cooper, he comes from a town of one thousand, like one of these small towns. Oh, Iowa. Yeah. And I know, it, pal. It, it, you know the deal. And you've <laughs> seen the basketball Iowa. highlights. Who? Odebolt, Iowa. Spell Those, that? You know it. I think it's O D E B O L T. That is Odebolt. Ode yeah. And Ode -de Population yes. one thousand. Um and was like the best basketball player to ever go through that high school. Average something crazy Football and has all too. these highlights. Don't and track. He's yeah. a sick Baseball. athlete. Yeah. Is he smart? I assume he's maybe the smartest Genius. he ever come to. Probably. Probably. Here we go. This I is love this. This is Odebold High. Look at this. Now he actually went to uh, OABCIG, a bunch of small towns together. Oh, I've seen those combined. Yeah. It's one of those. Yeah. We had one of those uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, went and played volleyball against out in the middle of the sticks. It was like. Did you play volleyball? Yeah, I was pretty. Really? I was okay. I was yeah. a pretty good volleyball player. Yeah, I enjoyed. How's the plum? How's the plum volleyball program? We were good. Solid. Yeah, we were good. We used to fill up gyms too. Like people come watch, mostly because yeah, the other fun. teams hated us, and there was a whole, you know. Yeah. Anytime I'm a part of something, there's probably gonna be some dramatics. You know, there's gonna be some shit. Volleyball. It was awesome. It's my favorite sport. It's my favorite sport to play. Shrek, you play I love volleyball. Bump set. Yeah, we're right I there, that, brother. We didn't, we didn't, <laughs> I, I went to Freehold Township High School. We didn't have a volleyball program, but I, I like to get out and mix it up on the Jersey Shore sometimes. Yeah. And I like to get out there in that beach style, baby. Beach volleyball. Ooh. Beach volleyball, obviously, much different than gymnasium totally. volleyball, but it's a great sport. Uh, I forget where I was heading, but I would assume if Cooper DeGene played volleyball, yeah. Oh, yeah. he'd be the greatest volleyball player mm -hmm. of all yeah. time. He is, uh, I'm excited to see what happens with him. Me too. I, and that's going to be a big story regardless because the way Pete Schrager laid this whole thing mm -hmm. out. Absolutely. You know, if you heard the way yeah. he said corner, mm -hmm. he's going to play corner cornerback. Corner. You, know, you know, the same position as uh, Pac-Man Jones mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to be playing cornerback. Pac-Man yeah. played 12 years. Yeah. Absurd. Think about that. Who's the dude from Washington played like... 16 years, 17 years a corner. Daryl Green? Yeah, how long was he there? How long was he at Daryl Green was there since like 80, I think 90 to 2000 something. So yeah. Damn. 18 years, 19 yeah. years. That's like the most, yeah. that's the position you have to be the most athletic uh, when it Dude, comes Dude, Terrence to Newman. Remember Terrence Newman? He, he played 15, 40, 16 right? years yep. in a corner. Yeah. Champ. Joe Champ. Bailey. Yeah, Champ. Oh. Champ. Joe Hayden. So athletic. Yeah, yeah. Joe's. Because you don't know what's coming and you have to be able to, the fastest people wide receivers, right? You have yeah. to be able to run with them and also break with them, be quicker than them and smarter than them on every and, play. Never tap out. And they all and they want to move you to safety. Like that's the okay, we'll get two more years out of safety, but I love those guys who say, No, I'm still a corner. Yeah, it was Pac Man Jones. Yeah, yeah, Pac Man right. could have got probably two to three more years in a yeah. in a career at safety, especially with how he liked to hit people. But he said, oh, no, I'm not safety. I'm a yeah. I'm a corner. Well Cooper DeGene say, I'm not safety. I'm he, a corner. He might, but he also would just say, I'm a fucking football player. You yeah, put, put me, me anywhere. Put me wide, receiver? End, wide, yeah. wide receiver. Wide receiver. Yeah, I'll play quarterback. Too. Won a couple state Both championships ways. playing quarterback. All right, let's move away from the draft and Cooper DeGene, even though it is a historic conversation. Yes. Let's talk about maybe some movement amongst teams that mm -hmm. – Maybe draft related, but maybe not. Tone has a question for you, sure. Yeah, it could be draft yeah. related because I, I saw uh, in your mock at 20 of the Steelers going Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. But in your little snippet, you said 
basically, this Omar Khan is not your father's Steelers GM, okay? He's not mm-hmm. afraid to make moves. And, you know, there's this name that the Steelers insiders and other people just keep throwing out there, and it's Brandon Ayuk, okay? Is there a, is, what are you hearing on Ayuk, first and foremost? Is there a chance that if, you know, if the board doesn't fall the way the Steelers want it, that they try to make a draft night trade for Ayuk or so, maybe like Cortland Sutton, something like that? Yeah, look, I just thought when they went, you know, big on those quarterback moves and that was like gangster stuff that he was doing maneuvering that and move the move the chessboard pretty well to get both justin fields and russell wilson i i I, just from sources within the league it's like all right well wide receivers next when they Mm -hmm. made the deontay johnson trade for you know carolina it was like okay well wide receivers next omar's not done um it seems like there's been a bit of a stall on that so if it's not Ayuk and it's not you know, Sutton, well, they could very well get the fourth wide receiver in this draft. The way it stacks up, you've got the big three. Mm-hmm. And then I've spoken to teams, and it's like some teams love Thomas out of LSU. I'm telling you, there is a big love for Lad McConkey as potentially the fourth wide receiver mm-hmm. in this draft, as crazy as that might sound. Um, and then also the two Texas Why kids. Why does that Worthy sound crazy, Shane? Uh-huh. <laughs> What's crazy yeah, about that? Yeah, we know it's he's playing productive. wide receiver. <laughs> what about Not that? tight end. Like he's playing wide receiver. Mm-hmm. What, what, what are you, <laughs> what are you <laughs> talking about, we'll Shane? About. I think Lad goes first round, but I'd say I'd be surprised if he was the fourth taken based on all the talk of him being the eighth or ninth guy going into this month. Got it. But he has jumped up draft boards. Teams love meeting with Lad McConkey. Footwork, smarts, all of them. And guess what? He ran a 4 3 9 4. So uh, you look at the Steelers, that's a really good spot if you're sitting pretty at 20. Wow. And don't make a move. And you say, okay, well, we still get the fourth wide receiver in this draft. Two other names I would circle for the Steelers Byron Murphy, the big defensive oh. tackle. Uh, from Texas, who's awesome if he somehow falls to 20, and Darius Robinson, another defensive lineman out of Missouri who is getting a lot of buzz right now as well. I circled both of those names. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yep. Yeah, Tell Belichick, circle them, Bill. Yeah. Well, Bill actually said yesterday during the announcement, I can't wait to hear your guys' expertise. It's like, Bill, yeah. it's like, enough. It's like, easy. We get it. We get, we get it. it. We understand, Bill. Hey, Shrek. I love the all the Lombardis behind him. I love that. That's not all of them. There's two missing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Because he's got eight, right? Yeah, he's got two as a coordinator as well. So, like, does he, like, stay at the hotel with you guys? Like, what's the – I'm so yeah. fascinated by, like, the off-camera with Bell. Is he hanging? Like, what are we doing? Last Thursday, I was in <laughs> Chicago for a dinner with him. We were in a back room of a steak place that was playing Las Vegas club music in there. Like, Tiesto, like, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Pretty loud, pretty good speaker system. Not Sinatra Vegas. We're talking mm-hmm. Tiesto yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was okay. very well speakered. Too like the room itself was meant for a good time. A lot of shit on the table. Like great, it was just him and me. Big table, big room. Just the two of you. Just the two of this us. This is and- like the scene in Heat where Pacino and De Niro are finally together in a movie. Like it, that's what this feels. Well, like. Well, that's quite a compliment there. And that, but that is one of those, not both of those. And it was it was me, him, and his computer. And we had film. We we went through film. Here's the photo from the end of the night. Uh, we had a couple of adult beverages as well. All right, <laughs> dude. Yeah, we had a couple of adult Suited beverages. Suited and booted yeah. for Bill, huh? Yeah. He was just coming from a speaking op- or uh, corporate, I think, a speaking event, mm-hmm. which he's going to make so much money. Yeah. Oh, like, mama. Every company is just, we can have Bill Belichick come in here? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on in. Now. We will pay you whatever. Uh, it doesn't seem like too much. Uh, is there? No, it's Bill Belichick. Yeah, coming yeah. in. He looked amazing. Had film. We had some drinks. He was hysterical. I'm telling three and a half he, hours, I was fucking dying. I was laughing so my ass. Three and a half hours? So, like, you guys were so good on game day with the Army-Navy game, and I'm like, all right, that's a great connection. He was so good on your show yesterday. I'm more fascinated with that stuff, though. Like, Three and a half hours, because everyone who knows Belichick, everyone in his world, and you've had Lombardi on for years and all that. They say he's like the coolest hang, and I haven't had that opportunity. I haven't seen that side, but oh, everyone right. to a man says, like, great dude. You would never expect how funny and how cool he is off field, off camera. Drink, had a cocktail that was uh, originally served with no ice. <laughs> oh. And then it, he said, nope. can, I get a, can I get some... Can I get some ice in this? Fucking ice, <laughs> Come please. On. What are we talking hell? about here? It was amazing. It was, I pissed four times. He pissed zero times. That's coming right off the heels of Matt Rule saying they watched film for three and a half hours. And he was like, you want a water or something? Because I had to pee desperately. You know, I'm fine. He might have no crazy. coffee either, right? No coffee, no Never. something. That was on. Uh, that was on political news last night. I think they were reporting. Was it really? That. Yeah, that's great. Great to be back in the political news vein. Excited to be That's in I'm there. I'm sure you yeah. love Don't being worry. in that. Yeah, Shrinks, it's great. You guys get any of that good morning football? You guys get dropped no. in it? No. We talk about like, what kind of what kind of party favor would you want to get a birthday party for Sam Dyson? 
Greg's throwing a hundred on the block. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. No. Yeah, but it's entertaining. I mean, there's some segs where we feel for you while it's happening, like all of you up there, because we're big. I'm a big fan of Kyle yes. yeah. as well. In the whole, yeah. whole Three hours every day in the offseason, you get segments like, if you were to go to Coachella with any NFL head coach, who would it be? And it's like, good right, question. let's do it. That's not a bad scene. That's it. not that's a bad one. Good one. I like that one. I like, I like it. that one. There's some third hour ones that you guys get forced to do where we're like, buddy. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine my reaction if that was presented to me to be <laughs> like, hey, here we go. <laughs> good luck. But you guys crush it. And that's why the move has us a lot a lot of us worried. Yes. Yeah, we watch every morning in here. Shrags, we you watch know. every morning. You guys here. you guys have been great supporters and I am so appreciative of it. I mean I remember when I came to the Thunderdome and I was with Kingsbury and you guys had our show on uh, and I was like on the screen I'm like that's damn cool. Yeah it was neat. Yeah Shrags everybody had your damn show on. That's why you guys want Emmy. Yeah, yeah. fucking and right. And now it's not on. Right. Hold on. Belichick has his Lombardis. Oh. <laughs> He's one of those two. Yeah, he had, of, he had one of those two. He did. He had one of those two shrinks. I don't work for Amazon. They were trying to curry favor to me. They made me one of these. Did you get one of these? Yeah, they sent us one of those too, yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that look like me? Yeah, it looks just, just like you. you. I was actually, just like it you. does. Holy shit, striking It needs to be more jacked, though. Needs, they should have made your arms yeah. bigger. Yeah, and your legs, too. Look at those tiny little we have no. Yeah, we have no morning show anymore. We've been on hiatus. So I've, I've been going to the gym. I'm trying to get a little bigger here. I'm okay. ready for the WWE, baby. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. You're going to take a bump, Shrek? You're going to take a bump? <laughs> You think you could? Like you, 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 you think you could be a good wrestling person? I think you could be a manager. Oh you yeah, could be a good manager. manager for sure. Manager, yeah. They don't have wrestlers like when we were kids, like like Barry Horowitz and Erwin R. Schweitzer. Like they don't have those guys anymore. No, they don't. You guys no. want to bring back? <laughs> no, they don't. IRS was a dog. He was. Dude. He was. No, they don't. Is that you're talking? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what. I think that's the first wrestling conversation I've ever been in where those are the two guys that were kind <laughs> of referenced, it. but I respect. Barry it. Horowitz would slap himself on the back. Remember yeah. that dude? Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> Just like you, Shrags. Maybe get you out there, pal. Um, Saturday morning, superstars of wrestling. I was the guy. That, I'll be the guy who just gets his ass kicked every week. But no, 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 no. Need those people. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, nobody Whoa. ever talks about the uh, Washington Generals. That's you know, right. Uh, yeah, right. A lot of them Globe Trotters right. have needed them for a long time. We'll there he is. There's IRS. I was also a Brooklyn brawler guy. I mean, those are my guys. Yeah, hey, listen. If you were to pay attention nowadays, you'd find somebody you'd love. Oh, yeah. Are there? Yeah. Oh, you'd love yeah. Ivar. I think you'd love Ivar. Love him. Yeah. He's the best. Ivar? He's a, his name's Ivar? J.D. McDonough? Yeah. Shregs is a cow. <laughs> J.D. McDonough? <laughs> Dominic Mysterio? Ray Mysterio's kid? You'd love him. Love okay. Dirty Dom. You'd love I him. would love to be like the fanboy of the most random wrestler you well, guys have. That's, yeah. yeah. that's what we're doing yeah. right now. Yeah, we're kind of feeding you. Because you get those, like, those guys who are like, I'm a fan of a soccer team, but not in the first league or the second league, but the third league. No, no. That's my guy. Who's that guy? J.D. McDonough. Yep. That is your that's guy. My guy. He's part of Judgment Day, though, Shrake. You're not going to want to team up with this group. No. no. They're not going to want to team up. That's my dude. They're in trouble like without Mommy, though. Yeah, Mommy's yes, out. Are. Mommy, the, the, the Mommy of the group. She out hurt? with a shoulder injury. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She got hurt. Backstage mm -hmm. attack from Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan oh, revenge oh. tour. Holy shit. The rest of the girls better be careful. Yeah. Damian Priest is going to take his game to another level. Well, he's a champion. Damian I, Priest? I'm, I'm talking. Yeah. What's that, Shrakes? Damian Priest? You yeah. might know up. him as Punishment Martinez. Oh, yeah. Who's that? Our no, no, he, you don't. He's our world heavyweight champion, you Shrakes. Son of a bitch. For real? Yeah. Tracy Shrakes! He. Don't do what no, you're I doing right it. now. He's breaking. This I love it. I love. I love. I got into it. I watched WrestleMania, but I I saw the final stuff with Undertaker and you and the amazing call. Like I loved all that. I didn't know the the heavyweight champion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so it seems like you watched a Boom. clip of the end of WrestleMania. Yeah. That's what it sounds that like. five minutes. No. <laughs> Don't say that. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Drake feels like that's what you did, Drake. Uh, no, don't say that. It was a great I WrestleMania. Did. WrestleMania 40, uh, 40 was awesome. WrestleMania 41 is going to be sweet wherever it is. And then Can we break some news? Where's next year's WrestleMania? So that is something that is very talked about. I think I know. I don't know. Whoa! It feels like there are signs I, I obviously based have no on clue. reports. Can I give? Can I give three guesses? Sure, yeah. sure. I don't know the answer, so I, don't, I will not okay. be able to tell you if you're right or not. I'm going to talk about great, great cities, and I'm going to say Detroit. Is that a possibility? <laughs> nope. No chance. <laughs> I don't think Detroit. No fucking for way. The draft, though. Yeah. Sign uh, for the draft, Are they draft. leaving up that stupid right? sign for They it? just had like SummerSlam, didn't they? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and they said they're okay. never going back after, didn't they? They yeah. did not what? say that. What? They did not say <laughs> that. They did. But they did just have SummerSlam, which is second biggest show of the year here in the United States of America. So no, it won't be Detroit. They will okay. the Silver Dome, brother, too. Ooh. All right. Denver. Ooh. Oh. Open wow. air. Mile high. Open Altitude. air stadium. Oh, yeah. 
little Red Rocks action? Is that even close? I don't think so. No, they would rent it out probably and yeah, have somebody is. do something. Yeah, they'd twenty minute crazy. Ride. Wrestle, you know, Denver would be sick. Denver is a great it's sick. I, what's well, the chilly, weather? What's the weather? I don't know. It's actually it's kind of nice. April? When I went in February, it was like sixties. Because I think they say that where they are latitude wise is actually not that bad. Yes. You get up in the mountain bad. Then yeah. it gets cold. They can get the snow and shit like that, but I guess it's not as... The average low is 35, so that's not happening. Oh, right now? After this year, yeah. In well, April. and they I in believe April, they yeah. did just get... They got like six inches of snow a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so it won't oh, be dead when you're 0 for 2, Shrakes. Okay. Keep shooting. It has to be open air stadium, or could it be closed? No, it can be closed. Open air is like not good because like Philadelphia was freezing night one. Was it, it really? It was. They had a northerly wind coming through. There. Boy, yeah. Nikon said not a cold city open air stadium again. Yeah. Well, in Philly it was great. Their fans yeah, were fantastic. Awesome. Oh, yeah. This is the tweet I saw. So I was thinking, okay, on the east. Okay, how about Minnesota? They got a beautiful Ooh. indoor. Ooh, mm, I like that. Minnesota's not bad. And the city's connected downtown, right? Yeah. Yep. So everything yep. just like Indy. Everything could be. Beacon has it booked already for that time. Yeah, you're right. Gary V's conference, I think, is the entire month yeah. of April. What? No, Gary, Gary V was, was at I was going to say, he's not missing that. We saw him at Mania. He, he might be in the main event next year. Yeah, saw him walking Chubby. out with his chair and somebody else's. I took a photo. Whoa. Well, that was TJ from the Rich Eisen show that he was walking out with yeah. yeah. I got a chance to chit-chat with both of them. It was great to see them. Schrager wasn't there. He only watched a clip of the ending. Like, <laughs> yeah. it. It's not true. I watched, I watched it on Peacock. I watched a lot of it. Kyle was there. Kyle, Kyle was, was there. there. He was. Great promo afterwards, too. Awesome. Like, the very, staff. very thing. I, I, he, I sent him a text. He sent me a text. I sent him a text about, his, like... His, uh, kid was, his kid was grittying on the steps of the... It was cool. Yeah, it, it was. was it was really nice of him to say that. Like, legit. It was very cool to hear about his experience at WrestleMania as a first-timer. He seems like a perfect guy for the WWE. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, gosh. His personality is perfect. In Watch it. out. All right, Trakes. So you told us you're not moving to LA. That's a bummer, but yeah. we'll figure I it didn't, out. I didn't yeah. say that. I said it's it's a conversation, but uh, you, <laughs> you love, love the show and also love New York City. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of Amen. course. Yeah, we understand. Uh, we're excited to see how that works out as avid fans of yours and the program. We can't wait to chat with you next week, hopefully, as you piece together your final mock draft. You're the man. Good luck next weekend. Thank you so much for having me on. Guys, love you. Appreciate it. You too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Schrager. Love you, Shrags. Love you, Shrags. Love you, Shrags. All right. He had his fastball working today. Yeah. He's working a lot. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be a part of the show, the family. I don't know. Oh, hilarious. Thank you. His wife was like, excuse me? Yeah. We're moving <laughs> to Los Angeles? No, thank you. Well, that's what we were, yeah. That decision was, we heard that decision was made like, we heard they knew really, really, really far in advance. Yeah. Uh -huh. That that wasn't just dropped on him out of no. nowhere. No, no. Did you hear that, AJ? That's good. That's good to give them, give them enough advance, you know, with all their families and everything they have going on in life. That's good. I heard that really – I heard that was a quick drop-in. Yeah. Excuse me? Ooh, We're moving to where? Tough. By when? Ooh. Next football season. We're yeah. You got three months to find a house out there, okay? Everything's really affordable, too. Yeah. 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 It's it's really, fine. Everything's really <laughs> – I mean, if Shrake's really wants Man. to swing the pendulum, just – Take his family on a nice subway ride. Like, you want to do this forever, or do you want to go to L.A.? I've seen some videos out of that subway as of late. I don't know if I'm going. Yeah. No fucking well, way. I don't know if I want to go to the other place either. True. Well, I'm wearing... I don't know why pe more people aren't doing this. We talked about this with somebody that lives in New York, because we're hearing people are just getting yeah. punched. Mm -hmm. They need to start wearing, like, motorcycle helmets around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody loves fashion. You know, that's, that could be the new fashion. Mm -hmm. Just wear the motorcycle helmet, then nobody's punching anybody in the all face. All the time? Yeah. Then what? Just all the time to keep it on? Well, if you're traveling around, yeah. Wear a football helmet. Wait, wear a football helmet. You oh, can, yeah. I think you have better yeah, vision, probably. Perfect. Yeah. Get, get you a nice kicker, a quarterback. Yep. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. what if we get people with the D-lineman, old school there it is. Oh, oh, yeah. face or mask, guardian, ready to guardian show up cap. at work, yep. take your helmet off, <laughs> put it on the hat rack, <laughs> Yep. Yep. and then walk him back. I, just as I watch more and more videos on the internet of people just getting attacked out of nowhere in New York. It's like put some helmets on, all of a sudden you're breaking fists. Yeah. You're not breaking your fists. Easy fix. Probably want chain mail underneath your clothes too because there's a lot of people getting stabbed down there. Yeah, oh, that's true. the shark stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. Avoid the yep. shanks. Remember, we learned the other day if you do see any sharks walking the streets in New York City, uh, yeah. yep. they only get pissed if you touch their private their parts. Dongs. Exactly. Yeah. Don't touch any shark thongs. Nope. nope. They actually have two. Well, Yep. If they're trying to attack you, though, I thought that's what you're supposed to. Don't look up the picture. It's gross. He said they only attack you if you touch it. So. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. You so. got to ride the, their back, I think. You just got to hang on. I see a lot of people on here. Yeah. Hang dorsal on fin. Yeah. Dorsal. Yeah. Tickle Strong. the fin. A lot of Tickle people hanging on the dorsal fin of those yeah. sharks. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're been... always doing like this really cool, slow mm -hmm. pose. You're right. Yep. Yeah, you're like right. This. 
<laughs> like, that looks so cool. Yeah. <laughs> how deep in the ocean are you? How long is that trip out to where you are? And how quickly can that fucker say, yeah, I'm about done with you being a little bit of a hanger on her. <laughs> I'm starving. Yeah. But I appreciate that they're doing it. Always white people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh. 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 Remember when Poopy's got his hand bit by that shark? Yeah, I was worried about Poopy. <laughs> Still am. Speaking Probably. of being worried about people, uh, <laughs> Mabu needs to stay away from guns. Yeah, oh, please. Yeah, I don't know if you oh. saw little Mabu. Oh, well, yeah. Well, no. hold on, hold on. Tell me what there, happened. There has been an update. Yeah. Yeah. It was a shoot. Or, excuse me, it was a work. Oh, little Mabu wouldn't do that. Nah. I, I thought, I, as soon as I saw him almost blow his foot off with a gun, I was like, Mabu wouldn't be making that mistake. Turns no. out, yeah. It's a blank. Oh, well, don't be killing anybody, Mabu. No. Right. All right, well, let's end the show on that. Okay. Happy to hear it wasn't a real live gun he almost shot himself with. Exactly. Kind of good news. It is good. Feel good story. Yeah. Still got the Mabu. Good promo. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, and that I... That never makes its way into my no, mind. Nope, never. Nor should it. Tony. Tony, Mabu's chasing his dream. Yeah, you don't like Mabu? Is he? It will be. It will be soon, though. That, that thing, I think I texted you right after you were talking about that dude getting run over by the truck a couple days ago. The second the show was over, boom, it popped up for me. Yeah, see, that's the here's this one. Boom. Oh, just oh. shot shots ground after pulling out. Sure. It did look like it was a little bit too set up, but yeah. I didn't know with Mabu. You never know with Mabu. Exactly. No, he's a wild card. Mabu is a wild card. Mitt said he's got a Drake this coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Mitt personally or Mabu? No, Mitt told Mitt. me that. Via Mabu. No, Mitt, yeah. Mitt has Mitt, a, yeah. by way of Lil Mabu. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get through a break. <laughs> Big feel good Friday tomorrow. Huge. Mm. Let's not find ourselves in any situations where, uh, and I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about the whole world, where we look like Greg Doyle yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just for the good of society. That guy's a weirdo, huh? <laughs> Would have never Golly. expected that from him. I mean, I've known Greg a long time. He's been here in Indianapolis a long time. He was heralded as, you know, an incredible writer. He's one of the only people left at Indy Star who I have, you know, known throughout my entire time here. He's obviously... Pretty oafish. Well, he used that word yesterday, but he is like a, uh, you know, he likes to point out things that he thinks is wrong. Sure. And other humans and other things on a very regular basis. So whenever you have a situation arise with uh, one of the biggest stars on earth on the first day in town and you sound the way you sound and do the things you do, you don't have a lot of people that are ever going to say like, no, that's not him. And instead, it's the complete opposite. Yeah, they're going to kill you for it. Yeah. And they should. That was yeah. a very, very weird Weird interaction. I, I'd even go as far as say weirdest. Um, yeah, I've the weirdest a, potential yeah. outcome of an interaction at an opening press conference for the biggest star that's ever played for the team ever. Yes. With that being said, I'm happy that Caitlin Clark didn't just choose to hate our entire fucking city because of it. Hey, you know, I thought hey, right man. after she was going to be like, fuck this, trade yeah. me, trade me, I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah, and I saw his apology. He goes, oh, it's just so me. Hey, don't fuck this up for the whole city. Please. Okay? We got a superstar here who's awesome. We got a chance to chat with her. She sat in traffic to get up to the Thunderdome. Mm -hmm. We got a chance to chat with her for 15 minutes or whatever. It's like, we are lucky she is here. She needs to understand that. And we are, like, let's let's make her, like, this is your home. Like, Bingo. That's yeah. not a, you know, that's not how Indiana is. That thing, yeah. that interaction <laughs> is not how Indiana is. She doesn't is. need a weird uncle in her home. Well, I just tell you, you do that to me, we'll be okay. I had a hard time. I had a hard time finishing that. Video. Yeah, exactly. Me too. Yeah, it was that weird. He I was did. getting a little tack. Uh, mm -hmm. I just feel like uh, I just shut it off. I can't. Well, I read the the caption first. Yeah, and I was like, how? You know, yeah. it's got to be out of context. It's got to be. <laughs> how, it can't be that. Be that. And then as I'm listening to it, and then I hear the rest of the room laugh. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who the fuck's in the room? It's like weird, nervous laugh. What was that? Yeah, probably Why very uncomfortable. Laugh? I would assume. <laughs> And his follow up. A lot too. of people in that profession have judged us pretty harshly, you know, yep. for uh, a long time. And there's, yeah, and there's a lot of people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's, <clears throat> it feels like all, I'm not getting into it. Let's get out of here. A lot of people that are on the high horse, seemingly. Oh, yeah. You know, follow inevitably. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. We'll be back for Feel Good Friday, but let's remember not to be that person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Press conferences or life. Let's move forward. Hey, Amen. I saw a lot of people saying, uh, talking about how women athletes are talked to versus how male athletes are talked to. I never understood that because when we talked to Caitlin yesterday, that's a fucking savage. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is how you yeah. talk to Ka Caitlin Clark. I'm talking to a person who is more competitive, more talented, more driven than any other human in the building. 
I'm, it's not a male or female thing. It's like I am talking to an athlete who is a fucking monster yeah, dog. right there. So I don't understand how that is even a narrative that that happens. But also, like, Caitlin Clark handled it. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which could have been really... Feeds, could have got really awkward, too. Like, she she did a very good job. Feeds even more into, like, beast. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Bro, oh. I, I ain't get... This is your guy. So yeah. She's probably mm -hmm. saying something, yeah. and then let's move along. So I hate that that's how it started, but the way it's going to finish is with uh, just 10 straight W titles. That's uh, right. A lot of gold. How much fun is that going to be for us? So oh, much. Tell you what, the Jack, whole, everyone there, the, the parade you're going to have, everything. Yeah. Gonna be oh, I yes. I think of the parade. I didn't even, just now I, I thought know. of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big time. City's never had one. Yes. City. City's Legit. never had one. Think how big it's going to be. There has been Massive. a parade here. Well, Doesn't Indy have the motorcycle guys too? That they just stand on the bikes? Oh yeah. That, yes. Our motorcycle and uh, oh, they have a name. They have a name. They have a name. I know them. They're they great people. What do you mean? I should talk to them. I should say the motorcycle. Them. The cops on motorcycles? Yeah, they have like a crew, like uh, the traffic oh. control crew. You know what I mean? And something just happened. That was, yeah, I told you this thing was a piece of shit. It just busted. So you're <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyways, sure the do. Indianapolis. <laughs> Uh, the Indian, his feet thing, he's been kicking it around. <laughs> and it's very oh, heavy, shit. the thing that his feet sit on. And he, oh, they're, the drill team, obviously, and then there's a whole unit or whatever. And uh, Captain Il Nicky is in charge of them. Nice. They're Weapon. a great group of people. And they're also like a cool, like, yeah, let's have a good. Like, they get it. Yeah, they're like a uh, a cool group. So yeah. a parade here in Indianapolis would be oh. epic. She's going to lead us to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least one. Better get mm -hmm. your tickets now because they're only going up, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to get ahead of time, huh? Yeah, I mean, some, sometimes you just you make a good risk-free investment, if you will. Last thing before we go, ladies and gentlemen, Yarmer Yarger has scored a goal. What? For the Czech Republic national team. Uh, national team. He is 52 years old. We should have put him on the goddamn pens whenever he was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. He just outskated a guy with a nice one. Th I mean... What? A, why wasn't he playing for the Pens? He was literally in our arena Jeez. for three weeks. They lost his bobbleheads. He stuck around. He was sleeping on the bench in Pittsburgh. Jeez. Just give the guy some money. Let him play. Dangles, filthy, 52 years old. What? Goal. That's the act, Boop. baby. First shift. 52. Playing against what, some 21-year-olds probably? Yeah, not even happy about it. There's more to do, boys. And we know they're on the, yeah. the gas that... Uh, Biz told us about. We, mm -hmm. we do not know that. And he I don't told us. That was yeah, Russia. Not Yager, though. Not the Czech. Oh, I forgot. They're not the same. Jeez. Whoa. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Now's the time. <laughs> All right, we're back tomorrow with a feel-good Friday. I, I, I believe there will be a trip to a rumor mill tomorrow. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Who, do, who runs that? Who's usually who's the point man? What was, what was the oh no? The hell? What is I was very happy. It made me happy. I'm glad it didn't go away. I was honestly very excited. Yeah, what are you? He's talking. What are you talking What's about? that guy's name again? What's that guy's name again? He's talking about Donnie Don Don. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm glad he's still around. I'm glad he's still alive. What do you mean? Yeah, he's still alive. Jeez, he's not, I'm excited to hear what he's heard. You know what? Well, well, portions of things. What? Mm -hmm. Oh no, that Caitlin Clark press conference. Bingo. Oh, oh, oh it's, no. the, it's the, the top of the list. Rumor has. It. Oh, oh no. I think Mad Mel will be making an appearance now that we're less than a week away from the the draft. From what okay. I've been told tomorrow. On Feel Good Friday? And who else? Big Friday. <laughs> who else will we just cold call in the middle of the show because we're bored and don't have anything else to talk about? We'll see. Probably Tony, Tony Miola. That's a good call. What is Tony Miola doing right now? Good idea. <laughs> is he preparing? Study for, film. He, he study better film. be. Is he preparing for the soccer tournament? He now? better be. I don't even know if he's going to be able to make it because his kid plays for a baseball team in college, and if they make it to the thing, it's the same exact time as him. The, they won't. <laughs> Who's he play for? You don't even know. Uh, well, that's Oklahoma State. Asking. I think they got a yeah. good team. It's tough to make it to WCWS. Very. He's gonna stay at Wendy's house when he make it. Yeah, well, he lives in fucking Omaha. Did we know that? How would he get there? That's the question. Walked. Yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> From Columbus. Why? Like fucking Why Forrest Gump. Yeah. Why? He's yeah. Why would you walk? He's it? hunting the story, dude. Mm -hmm. He's You're a fucking right. journalist. He was looking to buy a gymnasium. No answer from Tony from... Miola. Hey, Tony Grazzi. Okay, we'll see you next time. All right, we're back tomorrow. Should be a dumb show.
There's no reason to watch, but we hope you will. Be a friend, tell the friend something nice. Uh, we got to give thanks. Randy Johnson, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Legend. Thank you, Big Unit. You were amazing. Uh, Wendy, fantastic. He, you are his Ohio chief. You mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. Pretty cool. I guess so, yeah. Wendy, yeah. He's hilarious. He's I'm glad he's still a big Ohio State fan. You guys are watching a game together next year. That's cute. I'm happy we put that yeah. together. I know. That's awesome. That is very that's cool. Nice yeah. That's yeah. nice of you to put that together. Well, you were the one that put it up. Your so. idea. Yeah. I should be able to, you know, hang out, too, if if I'm allowed. All kinds of yeah, if there's, if there's room, I'd like to go oh, okay. as well. It's one-on-one -on -one time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Con man, go. Fair you enough. guys are, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. No, it's one on one, one time. On one. That's yeah. what you do. Espresso one. martinis while we, with Wendy? Why not? Okay. Awesome. Right. Wendy Sweet. loves espresso martinis. You guys can't be sitting in the same. You, there has to be at least one seat. We won't go. Okay. Thanks, Beer Schrager. Thank you, Schrager. Boy, Schrager. Schrager's awesome. I'm bummed out about Schrager. good morning football. I know. Yeah, I'll be tough. He said he hopes he has a role. Yeah, I did. They'll figure it out. Pay him. Pay the man. I don't think well, it's about that. It sounds like it's it's I don't know. It sounds like it might be about that. Can't I think if you give me a little bump, I can move to California. It's going to have to be quick. I mean, he's like... City. He is the king of New York City. <laughs> I, mean, I know. It's, it's kind of his whole gimmick, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. anywhere. So, will he not not be the king of L.A.? He would be. Yeah, I don't know. McVay's his best friend, too. So. They get pretty juiced about that photo of him on the beach. Yeah, him and Tub look sweet out there. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We'll be back tomorrow. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're in this thing together. Never forget it, okay? Press conferences. Yeah, anything? all that kind of stuff. Never forget it. All right, team on me. Team on three. Let's have a good one tonight, okay? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. One, two, three. Team. team. Goodbye.